We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. We've also been getting strange reports of something moving. On... It's a lie! A gigantic beast! I mean, it must be 300 feet tall. And... Oh god, it's Gargantuck! Yes! yes! Welcome, everyone on the internet. This is Chris of Garcadicast, and we finally make it, make it, made it to episode dos. Episode two. We're committed, damn it. Yes. Commitment. Commitment. I got shackles. I got it all ready. So, got you by the hip. You got the ball and chain. Everything. Oh, uh, yep. I'm, 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 I haven't left this chair since the first recording session. I captured you like King Kong. Yep. I, I am, I am chained up. And I'm ready to go on a rampage. Let's let's fucking do this. Eighth wonder of Florida. <laughs> of just not the world, just Florida. All right. So first of all, I gotta do one thing very important. We got our very first Patreon. In fact, we just got our Patreon right before we recorded, as of the, today. Of yeah, it, it was it was great. I I just sat down. We were getting ready to record, and Chris just bursts into the room biggest smile on his face and he's just like dude we got a patron so shout out goes to aaron uh i'm sorry if i mispronounced your last name so just message me comment aaron uh dwyer that that's what it is dwyer uh andron dwyer andron oh i'm sorry aaron uh aaron dwyer aaron dwyer uh, uh i'm we're we're shaky on pronunciation so we're gonna go aaron dwyer because it sounds like wyvern and <laughs> one one letter away from having a really badass last name so thank you aaron so, de wyvern de wyvern so thank you so much for being my very first patreon you're gonna get your shout out and if you want to learn more about my patreon you can go to google foo yeah yeah and you can check it out. And I also want to say thank you for all the positive reception for episode one and all the good praise, all the all, thank you. Like, I, I'm literally, I'm not scripted this. This is a much deserved. Oh, Gargantua Cast is about, about as far from scripted as you can get. Definitely. So, yeah, thank you guys so much. And I'm making sure I'll have this episode down uh, on Mondays, the bi weekly. And now let's do our. First, well, second time doing Kai News, because holy shit, this week was busy. Like, I, <laughs> I thought this segment, well, legitimately, because the kaiju is so, the kaiju genre is so niche, that news will be very infrequent, but I guess because King of the Monsters is, you know... It's blowing up. One of the biggest movies of this year, <laughs> stuff is blowing up. So, Cole. Yes. Let's do our first kaiju news mm-hmm. with, uh, we're going to do by uh, franchise. So first, we're going to cover the big G. Oh, Goji himself. So, first thing we're going to talk about is uh, the first reveal of the Bandai figure. So, ban- uh, do you know anything about the Bandai vinyls? Uh, yeah, uh, I've seen the Rodan one, that like oh. really weird looking Rodan one oh. out of context. T-posing Rodan? Yeah, um, looking like a cheap, weird, like, it, he looks like a form Dracula would take in a Castlevania <laughs> game. So, what we're looking at right now is um, some Japanese magazine, I don't know which one, but they kind of like a catalog showing off uh, the four Bandai's for King of the Monsters. So we got Godzilla with glowing fins, which seems to be a recurring thing with all the merchandise in general. Yeah, mo- all the posters show him like glowing blue, like he's getting ready to blast some atomic breath. And it doesn't look too bad. Like it legitimately, like I'm not. A, I used to be in the big in the van- uh, Bandai vinyls, but quality has been dipping, especially the last um, few years. It hasn't been that great. Uh, like the only t- the only Bandai vinyls I get are for kaiju's that. Haven't been getting a lot of the uh, figure treatment, and um, I'm not going to pick these up unless, like, you know, NECA or SH Monster is too ludicrous, because I already got my um, SH Monster uh, 2014 mm-hmm. with the, that you got me for Christmas, the Spitfire version, and yeah. I think that would be a good representation for Legendary Godzilla. I, I will say, maybe it's just because I have uh, Jobby the Hong on the mind, mm-hmm. uh, but the, the Godzilla in this picture we're looking at here... If you if you if you're a fan of Jobby, you'll know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it looks like his um. It looks like the little the little tiny Go- Godzilla figures yeah. he uses to do the the ratings at the end. Yeah, but this thing, so I just look at it, I just like. Ah! But it's gonna be uh six inches. Well, the Godzilla, I don't know how big uh, Ghidorah's gonna be. Uh, Ghidorah looks fine. It just doesn't look painted. All his heads look stuck <clears throat> together, like yeah. they're not different pieces. Like it's just all three of them are like just yeah. right next to each other. They're not really big on articulation. They're they're meant for kids, but the sad thing is. For a while, back in the early 2000s, Bandai was like the standard of kaiju figures. Like, it, it was so good that Toho was using the toys to help make the suits. <laughs> but now, lately, we've been having Banana Ghidorah of last year. <laughs> 
And this year, oh, we're having oh, uh, T-posing Rodan. So, uh, I'm going to talk about Mothra. Mothra looks oddly yeah. dark. Like, there's a lot of black plastic. That's, she does, barely looks painted. Yeah, which is funny, because in the trailer for King of the Monsters, she's super, like, a lot of light, a lot of bright yellow light off blue. her. Huh? A lot of blue, too. Like... I'm noticing, like, a lot of the merch, the color is really inconsistent. Yeah. Like, remember, like, there was the, uh, the Jack Pacific Red Mothra. SH Monster Arts has the, um, a very traditionally colored Mothra, and this, it just looks more like Batra. Like, it almost has a Batra coloring, and, again, this Rodan looks awful. I know it's for kids, but the Jack Pacific one does not look bad. And this looks god-awful. Like, what do you think, Cole? Like, you, like, legit, like... This doesn't even look like the movie Rodan we're getting. No, it like it looks super like stiff and weird. Like his legs aren't even separate from the rest of him. I think the problem is that's not how that Rodan stands. If you look at the trailers, getting okay, monster, he stands like a bird. He like, perches. You know, he, it's a perch design, and I'm, it shouldn't be that hard to make a perch figure. Uh, I, I, it but, looks and the head looks really weird. Like it looks like he has like rabbit ears. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. So yeah, like I I know people who are in the Bantai or completionists, but I'm not, I'm gonna I'm gonna sit these ones out. All right. If if, uh, if you guys want to know where you can buy them, I've heard uh, Hobby Link Japan has them available for pre-order, and at most Ghidorah is only twenty dollars. Okay. So it's it's not, it's not too bad. That's a cool little Ghidorah figure to like put on your desk or something. If, if you're really cheap and um if you don't want if you can't afford NECA, which we're we're still not sure when that thing is gonna uh, be released if they're even making it. And the SH Monster Arts Ghidorah is like one seventy eight. Huh. Which is cheap by Ghidorah's figure standards in terms of SH Monsters, but still going to cost you at least a pinky. So, Not a leg, just just a little tiny, just a little phalange. All right, more Godzilla news. Yep. Next, we're going to cover the Chinese New Year posters that um, earlier the week of recording, uh, Legendary was supporting uh, supporting uh, celebrating Chinese New Year, and they released uh, four posters for each monster. So here we have Godzilla. Oh, that's pretty rad. Yeah, like the, um, the, the lanterns around. Yeah, so what and... yeah, what we're looking at is um, it's actually hand drawn. I don't know the artist. But this is on the legendary Chinese um, Twitter page, and um, they had four unique drawings. I'm sure you, uh, if you're in the Tokusatsu, have seen at least one of these. And they're hand drawn. They have like a lot of the Chinese um, items to sh- that you use to celebrate Chinese New Year. First one's Godzilla. It, it's Godzilla, and he's he's surrounded by a line of like uh, paper lanterns and like a bunch rib- of flowers. Rib- and a, what rib- looks like a koi fish at the bottom. Ribbons. Yeah. And apparently these uh, four posters were called the Four Kings. That's pretty rad. Even though Mothra's a queen. Look, it, it, sometimes gender spe- specificism is dropped for just a catchy name. Yeah. So next we have uh, Mothra. Oh, look, oh, that looks really cool. Legit. Like, I know you're not a big Mothra fan, but this is fucking cute. Well, like, like I, I, it's, it, I, I'm not a huge fan of Mothra, mostly just because, like, I can't buy Mothra ever being a legitimate threat to Godzilla. Like, just, I can't, because... I, 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 all I can think of is, like, just a giant bug zapper. But, like, how do humans have trouble dealing with Mothra? I mean, she is a goddess, and if you see the first... Yeah, a goddess distracted by bright lights and lamps. But if you see the, at least the first Mothra movie, like, she kicks some ass. A, a tanker of gasoline and the proper matches could take care of Mothra. I mean, they try to use a, a fire beam device that apparently humanity can create, and it didn't work. So, Moth... So, yeah... So next we're going to check out uh, Rodan and... Oh, whoa. Like, this is gorgeous. Like, I feel like uh, Godzilla isn't my favorite uh, out of these poses, but I feel like Rodan is my second favorite because just like... I don't know. I really like the colors in this one. Yeah, that's the, the thing. The, the, the reds, colors. the yellows, the oranges. It, it's, it's It pops really well. It's and really eye-catching. I'd hang this up in my, my office. I want all four of these, but if I had to pick two, I'll definitely get Rodan. And Rodan like, and Godzilla. Yeah. And lastly, we got Ghidorah, which is oddly, like, from his back. And he looks, he like, he looks very small. Like, the I'm, picture is from pretty far away. I'm guessing just because Ghidorah is such a massive creature. M- maybe they had to, like, pull it back pretty yeah. far just to fit him all Especially in there. the wing, um, the wings, the three heads, the two <laughs> tails. Just, Ghidorah is just a huge creature. Yeah. So, what do you think, Cole? Good, good way to celebrate Chinese New Year. Absolutely, or, I think it's uh, it promotes the film it, it, with these really beautiful posters. Yeah, um, and it's good to see you know marketing that isn't you know Japan and America. I like to see. I want to see more films take advantage of cultures of wherever they're being released and you know market themselves there. Like you mean like how uh, 
a lot of movies during the, like, the, I think it was the Shoah era where, like, talk, for some reason they brought in, like, in the German releases, they mentioned Frankenstein. Frankenstein. I mean, yeah. I mean, but, yeah. Like, King Kong Escapes, like, McKinney Kong was made by Frankenstein yeah. or something. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. It's like, but, you know, not lying marketing. <laughs> Yeah, just just some cool artwork and yeah. and, and uh, unique posters. It's yeah. really cool for collector's items. All right, Cole. Yes, you're in for a laugh. Oh, I'm sure I am. So uh, uh, aren't I always? Uh, Ruby's Costumes is going to be releasing a ton of merchandise, including costumes for King of the Monsters. Look, I know you're a Rooster Teeth fan, but I legit when you said Ruby, I thought you were talking about like R W B Y for a second. Yeah. So <laughs> here, <laughs> so here's the first thing. <laughs> Here's the first thing. It's it's a this is an, an adult this is adult size. This is an adult size Godzilla costume. It's supposed to be the fitting one. He looks like a nerdy neighbor coming over to your house. Like the, the one you really don't like talking to, but it, he's the one that never shuts up. Like um, what's his name from uh, Simpsons? Flanders. It's like if Flanders. How do do, neighborinos? It's me, Godzilla. Like from like a '90s sitcom. God. Hey, Godzilla! I'm home. So, yeah, re they're releasing a ton of Godzilla stuff. This was actually used... Can we they're... have a Godzilla sitcom? That would be amazing. I will watch it. So, <laughs> some of these costumes were actually used during um, 2014, so they're bringing them back. I'm uh -huh. guessing they're just modifying stuff, like different fins, because they did change the fins. I love the disco shoes yeah. that, this, that the, this dude's wearing. The combat boots, that really helps the costume. That just adds, <laughs> adds more immersion to oh, it. Oh, I love it so much. It, no, no gloves. No, no gloves, gloves at all. Just like, just, they, I mean, so you can still smack them hoes when you're in your Godzilla suit. All right, so here's some, okay, so here's masks. And I want to show you something. Yes. So we got a Godzilla mask. Looks a lot better than the one we've seen. We got gloves. Mm -hmm. We got a much better mask. But I want to show you something. Yeah. I'm going to zoom in. That's supposed to be Mothra. That's supposed to be Mothra? That's Mothra. We got other masks where, like, you got, like, Ghidorah <laughs> looks fine. Rodan looks fine. But that's Mothra. I mean, fucking the, the Ghidorah face looks like something out of a really cheap knockoff of a Boris Vallejo painting. Yeah, or it looks like uh, Smaug. From Lord yeah, of Yeah, yeah, I see that. Or it, it looks like the kind of thing you'd see on the cover of, like, Bob's first D&D &D manual. Yeah. It, it looks like, think of the most generic-looking Dra dragon. Make him gold. Yeah, like, just take a generic dragon, make him gold, and, and that's what we got here. Yeah, so, but the thing I want to talk about this Mothra is, without her fluff... She's fucking terrifying. It, it, it looks like the... It doesn't look like the head of a moth. If I were to see that without context, I would assume that's the head of, like, a giant praying mantis monster. Or, like, comparing to other kaijus, uh, it looks like ba a Batra mask. Yeah, that'd be much like, more fitting for, like, Batra. Like, make it black, add, make some mold for the horns. Make the eyes red. Yeah, Batra. Or uh, Megagirus. I know you haven't seen the film, but it's just another, like, bug monster. And... Uh, I, I, I would only know Megagirus from uh, godzilla -thon. Yeah. So, Which I mentioned in episode one, which you could watch on YouTube and where you get your podcast right now. Yeah. So, another close-up. So, <laughs> okay, to explain. So, <laughs> all right. The dog! All right. Okay. The dog let, let costume. Me, so, what we're looking at now <laughs> is a concept drawing. They're going to make a dog costume of Godzilla. But the, they, the thing is, is it dr Instead of using a stock dog, or, like, they, they made, like, a concept dog. It, it this has, looks like a meme template. It Look at the eyes. It looks like, it looks like, like, remember, remember Taco Bell dog? It looks like if someone kicked the Taco Bell dog in the dick. Yeah. It, it like. You it, can't it, on my balls. Yeah. But I do want to say, um, I feel sorry for every Chihuahua oh. around October. Any kaiju fan who owns a Chihuahua, please do not do this to your dog. Yeah, they they released uh, what we're looking at now oh. is some more items from the God. this catalog, and it's a um, pet costume for small dogs. And God, it this... looks so dumb. Also, can I just say, I want uh, what, uh. other items we have. We got this like child mask mm -hmm. that moves in mouse. But the thing that caught my eye that I want to own. Are these wall breakers? Po like they're like oh, 3D posters. It's supposed to be like Godzilla bursting through the wall. Or Ghidorah. Or... Oh, that's pretty cool. I, I, I I'm still not a huge. It, it looks like the same generic <laughs> dragon faces on the Ghidorah one. I think but it's just I, I do like the Godzilla one. I want. I I don't care if the movie's good or bad. I want this. Cole. Christmas. Yeah. Oh, birthday. Oh boy. This. Yeah. All right. Next. Oh. Okay. Okay. I, I'm gonna be legit here. I've seen that Ghidorah costume oh, before you, on Twitter. Oh, you seen the memes? I've seen it. And can, you, can you zoom in on a little bit? Oh yeah, um, I I don't know. Like this is the child. Oh yeah, this is the child version. Uh, I just want to say, looking at this image, if the voices in my head were personified, that's yeah. probably what it would look like. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh god. Oh no. god. I, I love everything about it. The wings look so dinky and pathetic. The 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 again the generic dragon heads. Uh, and like the skin <laughs> texture looks like it like they repurposed a shitty like Bowser costume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, it, I, it I legit- looks like they took a like a Mario Bowser costume and like repurposed it. it. At least I'm glad Inflatable Godzilla is back. Oh, Inflatable Godzilla is just a, one a, of the purest things in this a world. A treasure in every con. Yes. So one thing. So here's I guess is the adult version of the Ghidorah suit. Looks I, the same. I will say um, I gotta give shout out for. Um, uh, one on Twitter, uh, Kaiju Hime. Uh, she's a great artist. Please check her out. But she made a great joke. Uh, uh, slight spoilers. We're going to talk about the uh, Godzilla anime trilogy for our first review. But I remember she uh, took a screen cap of um, Metfees uh-huh. saying our like, our god and Uglo is this. <laughs> I just imagine that lowering from the portals. Okay, who do you think is worse? Ghidorah costume or Banana Ghidorah? Oh... Uh, why you gotta do me like that? I don't know. Probably Banana Ghidorah. Because, like, if I saw this thing coming from the sky, I'd be fucking terrified. But, Banana but, but if Banana Ghidorah came from the sky, I'd probably pee myself laughing. I will also... I want this Godzilla hoodie. One other thing is an adult-sized <laughs> Godzilla hoodie, and... I, I I love the pose. Yeah, this it looks like he's about to pull out a knife and mug me. Yeah, like the like it's one of those hoodies that uh, zip up all the way up to yeah. the hood to like make it kind of like a mask. But the pose the guy's in, he's got like his hand to a hip, like he's about to reach for a knife, and his yeah. other hands kind of raised, like he's about to like smack something away if you try him. Yeah, like it looks like he's gonna fuck your day up. Yeah, I will say I I really hope the fins look good for this hoodie because I will totally own it and I'll just like. Have the, like, you know, I've seen, like, Japan have their own Godzilla hoodie, but it's just the fins and the zip all the way up, but it's just, like, a black sweater. Yeah. But, yeah, that that looks pretty cool. So, uh, Halloween God. is going to be really interesting. So, next bit of news, I kind of skipped over some stuff. Okay. Uh, Time Books is releasing two Kaiju, uh, King of the Monsters books. First is an official novelization that comes out. One thing that annoys me about novelizations. Mm-hmm. I'm glad this comes out the day the movie comes out, but the thing is, give it a week only because, like, a lot of these novelizations spoil the movie. Well, I feel like that's the point, though. Yeah, it's, I don't know, it's just... Like, because it, novelizations of films are just, isn't it just the film in book form? Yes. Yeah, exactly. It's being, I don't know, it's just, like, I've never been a fan of... Like, I mean, I don't read them. I'd yeah. rather just watch the movie. Same. Not that I don't like reading, it's just that yeah. if, if it was made to be a film, like, most, <laughs> most films that were adapted from books are terrible, yeah. but... I mean, not all. I know, but, like, it's the majority. Yeah. But, like, this one was designed to be a film, so most likely it has a better chance at being good. So, like, I, I don't really read the novelizations. I was, I was least... like, what makes a film good in terms of storytelling, I feel, doesn't really work as well for a book. Because, like... It's a the, summary. Yeah, well, well, the rules of pacing are totally different. Yeah. And, like, a well-paced book makes a really long stretch of a movie. Yeah. And um, it's being uh, written by uh, Greg Keyes. I don't have that name doesn't come familiar. And the thing, it sounds familiar to me, but I have no idea why. And the thing about this book, uh, in terms of just like the, its existence, I'm just like kind of wish we had like a prequel novel, like a, in the yeah, same novel. something that we don't get from the film. Like I know there's going to be a graphic novel uh, for King uh, Kingdom Monsters that's a prequel called Aftershocks, which I'm really excited about. But I, I don't know, it's just not my thing. But another thing that is my thing. Yep. We're going to get a official art book from oh, Time. Cool. And look at this cover. Oh, that's pretty rad. It's the it's like a, a drawn version of that famous the famous scene from the trailer where Godzilla is like raising his head up, and blasting atomic, atomic breath, breath in and, the sky. Like I already have the King <clears throat> of Monsters version, so this comes out around July uh 4th, I believe. Uh June 4th, I mean. So June 4th and I'm so picking this book up. I I love art books so much. I have the King of the Monsters art book, I have the Pacific the first Pacific Rim art book. I'm uh, I'm going to try to get the Kong Skull Island one soon. And, man, like, I, I love art books. It's just, like, good inspiration for creativity, good inspiration just to see the creative side of things. And, or just to see, like, what was, like, almost in the film but didn't yeah. make it. Yeah. Make it really good for, like, theory videos. Definitely. All right. And we're going to end our Godzilla news mm-hmm. with, um, so, what's going on right now as of recording is Wonderfest. Okay. It's a Japanese convention that's basically their equivalent of, like, New York Toy Fair. Toy Fair. Okay. They show a bunch of toys for different properties, and we got a ton of X-Plus hmm. stuff. So, do you know anything about X-Plus? Aren't they just really huge 
uh, figures? There are statues. They're, oh, they're oh not, okay. They're not posable. They're not posable. Okay. But um, we got some a few. So we got this uh, D for real. Like X, D for real is a line of X plus. So we got this Kong Skull Island one. It's like him fighting the squid. Yeah, the squid. Yeah. I, I, the squid had a name. I don't remember the name, but I do remember it did. It was it, it just just until until corrected. Just call it like what? Isn't it Gazora, the giant octopus monster from Godzilla? Gazora. Uh, I know there was a giant uh, octopus that they that was in um, the original King Kong vs Godzilla that also appeared in War of mm. And I think this is what's supposed to be a reference to. But okay. I'm just gonna call it the giant octopus. I'm gonna call it Gazora until someone gets mad at me. Yeah. <laughs> so next, <laughs> then I will immediately back down. So next we have more super uh, deformed uh, defereals of. Like, Godzilla. just weird, big head, chibi Godzillas. Specifically from Godzilla vs. Hetera. Oh, yeah. And I, I was just about to say, because he's holding the two white orbs that he, like, pulled out of uh, Hetera's body. So, apparently it's confirmed that's supposed to be Hetera's eyes. Even though we see his eyes later after that scene happened. Uh, space is warped and time is bent. <laughs> Hetera, Hetera's a, a, a junk summon. You know? What a great scene. Yeah. So, we got one without... I'm guessing the one with the orbs is probably going to be an exclusive. Yeah, probably. And we got one without the orbs. Uh, they look fine. I'm not. This is supposed to be like the uh, suit they used from 1968 all the way to 1972, 73, whatever. Uh, I believe 70, 72. Yeah, because that's when um, Godzilla vs. Gigan was, and this was the last to use this suit. And I know it was a fan favorite, but it's really like I love the suit in Godzilla vs. I mean, got destroyed all monsters, but that suit was ragged by the end of it. Like you know the famous scene in um, Gigan with the. Um, where Godzilla's arm was, like, flaking off. Uh, is that the same film where that had the wa- ocean scene where he, like, rises up and part of his tail breaks off? No, that was uh, Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla. Did, oh, okay. They're completely different. Like, th- both suits were used a lot. Oh, they were r- torn up I fe- over yeah. years. So next we have an- the last one reveal for Deep Oh, Rift. Shin. It's a uh, Shin Godzilla. <laughs> Uh, but oh, it's, it's spoilers for the end of the movie uh, okay. on the end of him. Um, basically, it shows what happens to Shin, and something happens with the tail. If you guys seen the movie, you guys know what I'm talking about. And, like, this is really cool. I, I, if I had to get a Shin D for real, I would get this only because, like... If I were to get any D for real, it'd probably be this. Yeah, only because, like, the, my problem with um this... We've seen uh, SH Monsters release a version of this, but it's really redundant. Hmm. Like, I don't want to get a posable version of Godzilla turned to a statue. <laughs> I mean, like... Doesn't that kind of destroy the point? Yeah. So this looks really good. I love... If you ever need a really cool looking Godzilla paperweight. Yeah. So next, uh, we got a bunch of reveals for their standard S- uh, X+. Plus. So we're going to get Godzilla 2000. Or, funny enough, it's Godzilla, uh, Godzilla 2000 in Japan came out in 1999. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so we're getting Godzilla 2000. We're getting uh, King Caesar, your boy. My boy. My boy, King Caesar. And he'll get one eventually, boys. We're getting... Um, uh, show a Mecha Godzilla. Oh, rad! And they didn't have. If you see the image on social media, I'm going. I'll post a link if you're they watching. It YouTube. doesn't look like they have the figure. It's just like a picture. Yeah, they have a, a picture showing a 3D model of Orga, and I'm happy because Orga needs love. I love this. This is one of my favorite um, lesser known kaiju's. And um, I mean, he was the. He was only in like two films. Yeah. Well, debatably, one film. His other, his cameo in what we're going to talk about is <laughs> super disservice. Uh, yeah, but technically, yeah, like cameo. He's <laughs> still there, even yeah. if it's just a cameo. Yeah, and like, I'm really excited for this. I'm I'm really glad to see some Orga love because um he was my he's my main in um the the Pipeworks games. Ah, so and last but not least, we're getting and this is unpainted, but we're going to get Mecha King Ghidorah. You should make, we should make like a subscriber special. Yeah, like. Oh, uh, once we get like a thousand subscribers on YouTube, we it should just we should post a video of just us playing like Godzilla Destroy All Monsters on the GameCube. I have plans. Yeah. So we, oh, and, uh, and, uh, this Mecha we, King Godzilla. Mecha King. Uh, Ghidorah. Mecha King Ghidorah. Sorry. Mecha King Godzilla sounds like someone's OC. Oh, uh, this is a Super Mega Ultra Godzilla. He is my uh, Godzilla OC. Do not steal. He can. He could totally beat up Godzilla he, Earth he, and Shin Godzilla. And 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 uh, shut up. He could shoot atomic breath from both his mouth and his eyes, and it makes, like, a super atomic breath. And last but not least... We have Albino Godzilla. Uh, this is supposed <laughs> to be Godzilla 2019, where we, we got our first X-Plus for um, King of the Monsters Godzilla. And this is supposed to be part of the gigantic line, mm-hmm. which this thing is probably going to be, like, two feet tall. There, there, there's no real size comparison in the photo we're yeah. looking at, so I can't tell how big it is, but... 
Yeah, he looks... If if he is that big, he looks very well detailed. Yeah. And, ve- like, a ton of effort went into making this look super good. Hopefully the paint will be really good. Like, X-Plus is known for really good paints. And, and for the size of it, I you can probably expect this guy's gonna be pricey. Um, I gotta give shout-out to uh, Kaiju News Network on Twitter for showing me... Uh, uh, make me aware of this, and apparently they uh, he said it's going to cost five hundred <coughs> US dollars. The, the, yeah. So if you have good income, and if you want to get this thing, or if you have access to your dad's credit card and he doesn't care, yeah. And that is the end of our Godzilla news. Now we're going to talk about Power Rangers. Power Rangers. So first bit of news before we talk about the toys, we're going to talk about some important Power Rangers news. So, Hasbro CEO uh, Brian Goldner has apparently been in talks with Paramount, and we're going to guarantee a new Power Rangers film. Not a continuation of the we film that came out? We do not know. It's just we're getting a new film in some shape or form. Because I thought, I thought the... We'll probably review it eventually. Yeah. But um, I, I felt the live-action Power Rangers movie that came out a couple years ago it wasn't terrible. I think my problem was it's just... Out, um, some of the rangers were a bit underwhelming. Like, I feel like the red ranger was kind of boring. I felt, um, the pink ranger was boring. I will say, um... We'll, we'll save that for when we talk about yeah, it. But I, yeah. I, 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 uh, I will say, if they do a, a re... Uh, I hope at least a soft reboot, and they keep the actor who plays Trini, mm. the actor who, uh, the actress who played Trini, the actor, the actor who played Billy, because Billy was the best character in the entire movie. He, he was the heart of the film. Yeah, and I hope they keep uh, Brian Cranston as Zordon because that was <laughs> that, was, that was fantastic. Oh, Brian. So yeah, so not much. We just know. Uh, uh, I have to thank uh, Toku Nation for uh, this article on it, and it's. I want to give credit to Paladin for this article, and um, hopefully we get more news as the time goes on. Maybe for Comic Con. For perhaps. So next uh, merch because we got a ton. Because by the next week of recording, Toy Fair is going on, but a lot of reveals are going on mm-hmm. beforehand. So, first we got this Play School um, Power Rangers uh, Wild Force Megazord. <laughs> Play School is like, you know, preschooler, but they've been posting a lot of Power Rangers stuff lately, mm-hmm. including I'm surprised to see Wild Force of all shows get some rep. Yeah, you'd think they'd be pushing toys for like the new series. Or at least the original Mighty Morphin. Something. Like something with like, that was like boom. Iconic. It was, it was, everyone knows it. Especially with uh, Beast Morphers coming out soon. Well, I'm, I'm glad something like you, you said, what company? Like, Playmobil? Uh, Play School. Play it's, School. It's, uh, it's one of Hasbro's uh, subsidiaries. Uh, I'm glad, like, a company uh, is focusing on making uh, Power Rangers toys specifically aimed for the younger, younger children. So they can And go... not just the man children. Yeah, like, like, that's the thing. Like, as much as I'm a big toy collector, I kids need to have something. Because I don't want to... Because it's really not fair for kids. Like, uh, legit. I, let me tell you. I, re- I can relate with this. Because, Remem- like, super pricey, high-quality toys, uh, like, they're not meant for children. Because many <laughs> of them are too fragile. And, yeah. and, like, you'll chip the paint. You'll break something. And they're not meant for, like, really enthusiastic play that children will do. Not to mention the fact that um, I remember back when... Um, this is unrelated, but this is relating to just being a toy collector. Mm-hmm. And this is why I think there should be just collect uh, collectors only stuff and kids only stuff. Back when um, uh, Revenge of the Sith came out for the th- uh, Star Wars, the third yeah, prequel, yeah, yeah. Um, I was kind of into Star Wars back then, and I wanted to get a Darth Vader figure. Mm. So me and my mom went to Walmart, and a bunch of people were waiting like six o'clock in the morning, go in and just swamp. Oof! And there was nothing left. They took all the Darth Vaders. They took everything. Damn. And I really think it's not cool. Yeah, like. I mean, that you could blame that on, like, stocking issues. Yeah. And I'm glad, like, you know, there's websites catering to that. So at least, you know... Big Bad Toy Store. Big Bad Toy Store, Hobby Link, um, Toy Wiz, Entertainment Earth. Uh, the huge list. And they're catering to the collector's market. So kids can go to a local Walmart and get stuff. All right. So next uh, bit of toy news, we got the um, the Beast X Ultra Zord. So this is the official... Uh, Hasbro Ultra Zord for Beast uh, Beast Morphers. The, the new show. The new show coming out this year, and I'm really excited for it. And this is a really cool uh, Ultra Zord. Yeah. It, lo- it looks like there's a lot of moving parts. I'm, it, I'm guessing it's just because it's like the regular Megazord, and it just puts something on top of it. Oh, probably. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's an Ultra Zord, so. Yeah. So we got costumes. and Costumes for the Beast Morpher Rangers. These are kids' costumes, and I gotta say... Um, one thing that annoys me about High Ranger costumes, mm-hmm. the, that they're overly muscular. Yeah, with like the... F- <clears throat> I'm sorry. No problem. I, I, I actually, I, I should extend that apology not to just Chris, but also to the fans listening. 
Uh, I've kind of been getting sick these past few days, so if, if you've been hearing me sniffling and coughing, I apologize profusely, but I, I, I think that recording while sick, it shows dedication that we want to get these episodes out for yeah. you. We're, we're trying, because this is something we love talking about. Yeah. The whole reason GargantuCast even started is because we talk about kaiju stuff all the time, and it's just, it, to get it out there, and like, maybe make the niche market of kaiju and tokusatsu stuff made a little bigger like so some people who would be super interested can jump on board and like yeah I'm, i apologize for sounding sick if it like make messes you up i'm sorry but let, let, let's just keep going i just yeah. wanted to get that out there to, no no, since, no i completely because i'm sure there's probably somebody who's tuned out because yeah. it's like oh this is gross he keeps he keeps sniffling and it's so nasty I, I i feel like i have more faith in the kaiju community that they won't check out but I mean, with how cool people have been being on Twitter, on, on the Gargantu Cast Twitter, it's dude, you guys' <laughs> support is really awesome. I have been more active on Twitter these past few days than I have been in the past like few years. Yeah. So one thing, uh, going back to our um, talking about these costumes, my problem with a lot of Power Ranger costumes is that they don't understand what Power Rangers are. They're like huge and muscular. Because my nephew. Last year was the was a Red Ranger, and uh-huh. he had a, a Red Ranger costume, but it's like... It's got, like, the huge fake padded muscles yeah. you'd see if you were, like, if you were supposed to be, like, a like a professional wrestler costume. Yeah. And with these, they're, they're padded, but the thing about... And I think it's just the way these designs are. Like, uh, you've seen the Beast Morpher designs. They're, like, leather and stuff. They're yeah, very... They, they look like bikers. And these, they work really... Like, I'm impressed with these suits for kids' costumes. They, they look pretty high quality for kids' yeah. costumes. And speaking of high quality, uh, Hasbro have released their line, or they're like, I believe, four inches. Uh, well, uh, before we talk about that, uh, we got the mask, and I gotta say, very vibrant. Very bright. This is um, the Red Ranger, and um, here's the Blue Ranger. And I get, I really wish we uh, they had the Yellow Ranger just to give her some love. Yeah. But There's they, no Yellow Ranger mask? I haven't seen it. Uh, I haven't seen any. But um, here is like uh, the Red Ranger sword. Okay. With like, pretty, pretty cute. I feel like Danielle, which is one that just for her to have a cat sword. <laughs> cat sword. Uh, for those who don't know, Danielle is uh, Colbert's uh, loving girlfriend. Uh-huh. And um, we're gonna, uh, I feel like she's, we're going to mention her off. Like She's going to be like a, a nebulous she, she, being. She, <laughs> if, you're, if you're a fan of really, really early John era game grumps... Uh, Danielle's gonna be a bit like Susie, where she was just like this nebulous <laughs> figure that never spoke but is yeah. mentioned every now and then. And I, I think Danielle might like this uh, Power Ranger series because it involves animals. I mean, her favorite Power Ranger series that she enjoyed watching with me was uh, Jungle Fury. So I think she might like this. So like, I, I, I'll one Beast Morpher is is on Netflix or something. We can probably check it out. Yeah, here's the uh, Blue Ranger sword, which it I, looks like it's made of Legos. It looks yeah. super blocky. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm like. At least Specifically the, the blade. The rest yeah. of it's fine, but, like... Because, like, the, the Red Ranger sword looked like it was, like, lightning. It was all jagged with yeah. a lot of, like, edges. Um, but the Blue, but, but the Blue Ranger sword, it has a lot of harsh angles. Like, it comes to, like, right angles at yeah, points. Yeah. It looks like it's made of Lego. And, like, at least with the Red Ranger, it had, like, a... like a, a like, I believe his sword is a cheetah. Mm. But the Blue Ranger is a gorilla, but I don't see a gorilla. Uh, yeah, I don't see it either. Because, uh... Uh, the, the Red Ranger sword looked like a cheetah shooting blue lightning out of yeah. its mouth. Speaking this one just looks like a really, really oddly designed lightsaber. Yeah, speaking of shooting a cheetah, <laughs> uh, Nerf is teaming up with Power Rangers. About and, time. And we got this, like, Nerf uh, uh, Red Ranger I don't care if pistol. I'm 24 years old. I still go to the... Anytime I'm in a toy store, I still look for Nerf guns. We gotta have our Nerf war. We, 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 we've been planning to, like, get some Nerf guns and do, like, go to a park and do a Nerf war. Yeah. So we got, like, it's the shape of the cheetah zord, and its legs are supposed to be, like, the cartridge to shoot the nerf uh, pellets, which are also colored blue. I'm guessing, like, your energy is blue. Yeah, like, blue energy lasers. Yeah, it's pretty It's pretty neat. And we got this claw gauntlet. It's pretty uh, rad. Pretty... I, I always liked weapons like that when I was a kid. To be fair, I, I noticed this right now. Mm. It looks like a repaint of some of the merch for Black Panther. Because Hasbro helped I with remember them. seeing those, like, Black Panther claws in, like, a Toys R Us. It's, again, when I was looking for Nerf guns. Uh, it does look like someone just took one of those Black Panther claws and painted it red. Yeah. A little bit. And here's the uh, Beast X uh, Morpher. It's, you always gotta, you always gotta make toys the Morphers. It looks always. Like, it kind of looks like an, the SPD Morpher. I don't know, or... or uh, it's been a very long time. I mean, I love SPD. It was my favorite Power Ranger <laughs> series growing up. But I, I have not watched it. 
in a long time, yeah. so I honestly can't remember. Yeah, like, I want to know how this Morpher works, because, um, I remember when they were filming the original Power Rangers series, mm-hmm. the Morphers were so good that, some, like, apparently someone, some asshole was stealing the more the actual props from the set of My Morph Power Rangers, so what, they bring in the toy versions to use, <laughs> uh, when recording, because they're that good. So, lastly, are these four, maybe five-inch figures, and, like, you know, for a kid's toy, that's going to cost oh, $10. Oh, I, I see the gorilla now. Yeah, they're like these weird gaunt, like gauntlet blades. Like, that looks a lot better. Yeah. And um, apparently there's going to be a gimmick across all this line. And I got to say, for a ten for a $10 figure, that doesn't look that bad. You're pretty bow-legged, though. Yeah. Well, I'm guessing it's just the pose. Yeah. So, Blue Ranger. Here's one of the villains. His name is Blaze. He looks like an evil, a, an evil version of the Rangers. Yeah, I was about to say, like, if if this series had an equivalent to the Psycho Rangers, he's the Red Psycho Ranger. Yeah, his name is Blaze. I'm I, I'm guessing he's like a lion or some type of big cat. I don't know, maybe something like a leopard or a yeah. panther or a cougar. Yeah, so, some kind of large cat. Um, here's the Red Ranger, and it's, it seems to be a gimmick. These weird like animal heads with these blades. I mean, like animal theming. It's always a thing. Yeah. It, wait, hold on, hold on. That picture. Is the Red Ranger holding the Blue Ranger's sword there? Maybe it's that's like... A, that's what it looks like. Maybe it's like universal. It's like a universal weapon. Or I mean, we've had Rangers use each other's weapons before. Or maybe it's just a prototype. It could just be a toy thing. Like, just like the person who did these pictures didn't know. So, here's one of the foot soldier villains. They're called the Tronics. So, th- these are the putties of this yeah, series. the putties of this series. I'm gonna say, cool looking foot soldier. Really big shoulder guards. Yeah. Like, he's about to tackle someone and lastly the yellow ranger whose animal is uh, a rabbit which we need to see more rabbit zords i don't know why i feel like we have a all pack- i can think of is hippie hop from coding <laughs> to the next door hippie, yes it, it's hippie hop it's <laughs> it's well the thing no the, no the thing is her zord's a helicopter was hippie hop ever a helicopter no hippie Co- hippie hop was just a like a beast and it had like because i i remember it had like those uh like crane like digging <laughs> devices for its hands, and for, it, like its body was made for, out of a cement mixer. For those who's really confused right now, um, if you're like around twenty five or below, I'm sure you watch <laughs> Kids Next Door. Code Kids Next Door as a kid on, on, on Cartoon Network. Network. And uh, one of the kids turned uh, number, number three. Number three, she had this giant like bunny mech that was legitimately terrifying when oh, it first wait, appeared. When she pulled it out, it meant shit got real. She would fuck things up in that thing i and it was a beast yeah and, and it was a giant rabbit mech called hippie hop it, like look look up hippie hop I, i'm <laughs> sure you power rangers or mech fans are gonna have a, a real good kick out of it it, it looks like a cheap budget zoid yeah and i love it so now we're gonna move oh, on. ultraman yeah and last bit we're gonna talk about is some other tokusatsu stuff so here's a new poster for the netflix ultraman show and oh god i'm so fucking excited for this show it looks so good. Like, it's 3D, but it, honestly, um, if you guys remember last week, uh, one of our guests, uh, Anthony from Something Ghoulish, compared to... Check to, out Something Ghoulish on YouTube. Or Ghoulish Cast. Uh, he couldn't join us today because he has his own podcast to check out for you. So, after this Be episode... Be sure to pay attention. Yeah. Don't scream. You'll want to hear this. Exactly. Oh! So, so, going back to Ultraman, this is a brand new poster and it shows, you know, the main character, the main Ultraman... And we have Ultra 7, and I'm not sure this other... Because, uh, Cole, have you ever read the Ultraman manga? Or... I have not read the Ultraman manga. So, so, for those who haven't... I'm only up to Volume 4, and I, I only started reading Volume 4. So, it's like a direct sequel to the original Ultraman series, but it's like a reinterpretation of the timeline. So, we got... The, the main character is the son of the original Ultraman, and he's the current one, and he has his Iron Man Guyver-esque suit. Like, apparently... It is very Iron Man. And next, uh, the one with the katana is supposed to be a new version of Ultra 7. And I'm not sure who the one with the green entry is supposed to be. I haven't read that. I haven't caught up with this yet. So I'm not sure if it's supposed to be like Ultraman Jack or... Uh, it's Ultraman Mountain Dew. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I did not see that coming. But <laughs> but um, it's a really gorgeous looking poster. It's a very nice. I, I like... Uh... Uh, uh, the beam effect for Ultraman in the middle. The the, uh, the, the spectrum beam. Yeah, it looks like he's preparing the spectrum beam to fire it right into the camera, and it's got, like, this uh, beautiful, like, cross light effect. Yeah. Other Ultraman stuff, some more Wonderfest announcements. We got uh, Aww, some awesome... Little, little chibi Nendoroid Nend- Ultraman. So, for those who don't know, uh, Figma is a huge uh, figure collect- uh Good smile. They they have the Figma lines and another line known as Nendoroids. Basically, think of Pops, but more anime chibi, and they're poseable. Yeah, like like they're about the size of maybe about the size of a uh, of a pop or yeah. smaller. Yeah, 
Um, uh, much more detailed. Very much. And they have, they usually come with a little, a couple accessories. Like a, a different head swap, uh, maybe different arms. And um, this Ultraman, it, this is only concept art, but it's, I, I kind of, I want it. It looks super cute. It's adorable. And we're also getting uh, Ultra 7. Oh, he's got the sword out. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I have a feeling because I, 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 um, I'm going to describe what Ultra 7 looks like and I'm guaranteeing, going back to Danielle, mm-hmm. she's going to think he's hot. Oh, probably. Young Japanese blonde boy with, uh, I believe he's blonde in the manga. I'm not sure. Blonde boy with glasses. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, I just want to say, uh, with the sword and his helmet, he looks like Genji a little bit. Oh. Doesn't he? God damn it. He doesn't he? The God damn it. You're not wrong. He looks a bit like Genji from Overwatch. Blizzard, Blizzard do an Ultra 7 Genji skin. I'm sure people are going to get it. Have you seen the Sentai skin? I have seen the Sentai skin, and it's... I, I If I played Overwatch, I, I would do my damnness to get that skin, because it looks super cool. Oh, the, the Genji Sentai skin. I, it's yeah. super cool. Well, first, I have to be good with Genji. Yeah. So... I'm, I, I'm not positive, but I think one of D.Va's skins makes her kind of look like she's in an Ava plug suit. Like, it's, it's got similar colors. I mean, her default suit is based off the plug suits. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I believe there's a skin where it has more accurate accurate colors. I, I want Wendy's diva. <laughs> the, the Wendy's diva. Yeah, it's pretty. So fantastic. last bit of news we're going to talk about uh, for more our f- news segments go. There has been a ton of news. I, I, this went on way longer than I thought. Yeah. By the way, like the way we do these news segments is Chris actively encourages me not to pay attention to it because he wants my reactions to yeah. be like genuine and new. Uh, like, j- j- before I sat down, the only really things I've seen was the Ghidorah costume. A-, a lot of that other stuff I hadn't seen before. Yeah. So, next, uh, from Figma is we're getting some Gridman oh, stuff. whoa! So, what we're seeing right now, it's actually, these are actually the figures. On the left is Grid Knight, and I'm not gonna spoil Grid Knight's role, but he's another character from the new anime SSS SSS. S S Gridman. There, I got it. Quadruple S Gridman. Yes, I or Grid. I could just call it Gridman. Uh, the new anime of last year, which is honestly uh, that and My Hero Season Three are my favorite animes of last year. Yeah, like, uh, you still need to see it. I, I still, I still need to watch Gridman and My Hero Season Three. I, I started. I look. I live with a roommate who wants to watch it with me, and I don't want to. And I don't want to be watching it. And he walks in and just gets an eye full of spoilers. So it's out of consideration for my roommate that I have not. <laughs> been watching my hero academia i should i fucking love my hero and i need to continue it yeah but going back to grid man we're getting some figma figma is kind of like sh monsters they're a bit smaller depending on the franchise but they're really detailed and really poseable and a lot more quality control from what i've seen compared to sh figure arts or monster arts mm-hmm. as much as i love bandai and tamashi nations quality control is not their best uh strong suit but um on, we got Grid Knight, which we don't have a release date, but Gridman Figma is coming out in September. According to, I pr- actually pre-ordered him on Big Bad. He should be coming out in September, not guaranteed. I mean, both of these figures look absolutely beautiful. And um, the Gridman, I believe, was seventy six ninety nine, and not too bad for uh, Figma for for how detailed he looks. Imposable. I, I, like I'm surprised he's not over a hundred bucks. Yeah, and like he looks absolutely fantastic like i want to definitely get Grinman so i can represent uh Grinman because i i love i love the show but i will say i gotta get grid knight like i don't want to spoil who he is his role but he is best boy he is best boy 10 out of 10 he's not the best character but he's definitely he's not uh akanane he is um, he's your husbando uh he i i will i'll cherish uh grid knight forever i <laughs> I, I gotta protect him because i uh, without spoiling anything he's bit he actually went through some shit oh boy i yeah I need to check the series out. It's only 13 episodes. Um, it's on Crunchyroll and Funimation. So definitely give it a watch. It's like, And speaking of Gridman, this is our last bit of news. Another Figma figure mm-hmm. of a character who, she's a good character, but my problem with her, she overshadowed the show. Uh, Rika. Hmm. A.K.A. Uh, thick Girl. Th- thick Waifu. Who's honestly... Thick Waifu 2018. I want to say something. Rika is a character... She's she's a great character. I I love her sass. I love I love her design. Like mm-hmm. I, my biggest problem with Rika is just how the anime community like she was the face of Gridman, not the kaiju's, not not Gridman. the mechs. Not well, he's not really a mech. He's like a he's like Ultraman. He's like a big person. Oh, he, he's uh he's nondescript alien species that looks like a mech but not a mech. Pretty much. Okay. Yeah. Just like how my Twitter bio mentions all those fucking there's like a million aliens in the Godzilla franchise that just look like dorky looking humans. Unless they like are wearing a disguise or something. 
No, but like I'm, you know what I, I mean. What How mean. many different alien races from any franchise can you think of? Like the Kryptonians. How many different alien species in like DC, Marvel, Godzilla? All these series that have alien species that look identical to humans. Yeah, but um, going back to uh, Rika, I just want to say one thing. Mm. The, the, everyone who was obsessing over Rika's uh, quote unquote thickness. It got creepy. Really? It got... Ups- people were so obsessed. It's like, I feel like some people knew her before even the show she existed. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, some, some... Okay, okay. Like, it's, it's, it's just me personally. I, I just kind of expect that shit from the anime community. Yeah. Like, I, I, like I'll shit on myself. Like, I, lo- I like anime a lot. I, I'm I mean, a fucking nerd. I mean, like, I'm a huge weeb, too. I love anime. But, like, some, like sometimes, like, you gotta admit the faults of your own community. Yeah. Like, like, like sometimes people are fucking weird. And yeah. they're gonna obsess over dumb shit. Yeah. Or they're just gonna, like... They, they don't give a shit about the show. They don't give a shit about this or that or anything that's really genuine about the series they're just like oh where's my waifu yeah and the one thing i, I was i'm kind of personally upset like i if there was going to be a human that i want to get a figure uh from gridman to get a figma i was really hoping it would be akanane yeah uh for those who don't know um it's not really a spoiler because it was revealed in literally the second episode <laughs> she's the main villain of the show yeah and um again, I, 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 all i know about gridman i need to watch it as just passing uh sentences from chris and, um, Akanane, uh, first of all, I say she's best girl, and I, legit, this is a huge statement. I know, uh, the Anime Awards are coming up soon for Crunchyroll, mm. and they had, you know, the votes. Yeah. I voted Akanane as the best villain of anime in 2018. <laughs> I actually think she, I actually felt she was a, be- a much more interesting villain than, like, um, All for, uh, All for One. Oh, you can fight me. Well, I, I need to watch the series, but until... I am better informed. You can fight me about yeah. that. All for one was terrifying. Well, it, it was hard because that a uh, uh, little, little uh, tangent about anime, but we're going to talk about a lot of anime today. But um, that uh, it's going to be a long episode. This is. <laughs> um, but the thing about uh, the anime awards, the I don't know the other options, but it was really hard because there was three vo- potential winner of uh, things I would have voted for mm-hmm. best villain: uh, Akanane, uh-huh. um, All for One, yeah, and Rio from Dumb Man Cry Baby. Oh yeah. And I was just like, I was just like, remember that picture of like the blinds and the guy was sweating for the options? I was literally like that. So, but I decided just how much I enjoyed Gridman and Alkanane is literally the best thing in the entire show. I'll just say this right now because it's- Beautiful trash girl. Uh, uh, damn bitch, you live like this. <laughs> I love that meme so much when people- <laughs> You live like this. Um, basically, how I describe the main villain, one of the main villains, Akanane, she's a kaiju weeb. As a villain. As a villain. As in all of us. Yeah. <laughs> and I will say, it's, it's not, it, I will say one thing, I like that Grimman balances as one of the main, uh, support, main characters. Mm-hmm. He was one of the good guys, is also a huge kaiju weeb. Oh, absolutely. So it balances out. And it, Battle of the Nerds. Exactly. So, there's our kaiju news of the week. I hope you guys are well informed <laughs> and are like, um... Uh, ugh, I, 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 my, my thoughts are all over the place because there's so much news. Our rambling. There we go. It's, it's our rambling. Yeah, there we go. So a lot of news. So our next segment, because like, I hope this becomes a fan favorite. Let's do this week's. Is this a kaiju? Okay, hit me up. What is? What is this week? Ridley from Metroid. Okay. Ridley, I've been playing a lot of Smash, so hey, this is relevant. To exactly. Me. <laughs> why do you think I? I, I, I why do you think I did it? You think I did? I, yeah, like you've been at, you've been at my place playing Smash with me. Yeah, uh, so it's fucking, Ridley a kaiju. Uh, Ridley, I I I think I'll side for it. I, I think yeah. I'll I think I'll sling a yes for yeah, Ridley. He's he's a bit on the smaller side, but I mean, I, if King Kong gets a pass, and he's only like twenty five feet tall. And to be honest, Ridley's size is very inconsistent in the Metroid series. Oh yeah, like the in the first <laughs> Metroid game back on the NES, he's only maybe like two and a half to three times your size. But in the As, Prime series, in Prime, he's so huge he can grab Samus in one hand. No, there's a shot where where Samus was like blasting her like blaster, mm. and she was in Ridley's mouth, and it's like she does she's small enough. Or if Ridley Ridley could literally chomp her and swallow her whole. Oh yeah, like his size is ludicrously like all over the place. So like you know, I, I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a gold star. I say yes. Ridley's a kaiju. Um, you yes. guys, uh, yes. let's see what you say in the comments. But like, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it yes. Ridley's a kaiju. And just to extend it. Um, 
Would you say King K. Rool's a kaiju? <laughs> nah. Okay. He, he, well, he, how, 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 about, how about fighting against K. Rool? Oh, fighting against K. Rool when I'm at the helm, yeah. you got maybe a 40% chance of survival. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm not the best K. Rool player, but I've been practicing. So um, when this episode drops, I'll ask if Ridley's a kaiju, and you guys can debate amongst it on the Twitter. So please follow us at GargantuCast. And from there, we're going to take a break. And we're going to do our very first review of the Godzilla anime trilogy. Oh, this is going to be fun. All so, three films in one episode. All right. So, so hold on to your butts, people. <laughs> all right. We'll be right back. Hey, guys. Quick commercial break. And I just want to tell you guys about the official Gargantuous Patreon page. For as little as a dollar a month, you can show your support and give reward along the way, such as a monthly raffle for Kaiju goodies, artwork by the official GargantuCast artist KaijuZilla98, votes for the next episode topic, and even merch. Yes, we even have merch, like any good podcast should. And any show of support is much appreciated, because GargantuCast is independent, which means I gotta pay for everything. From my equipment, to programs, to research materials such as movies, figures, and books. Because we all know the kaiju life is very expensive. So, once this episode is over, please check out the official Gargantua Can Patreon page in the link down below if you're on YouTube. Or, you can look it up on Patreon if you're listening to wherever you listen to your podcasts. And we're back. Yes. Alright, so, here's how we're going to do reviews. I'm going to do a summary of the film. I'm going to talk a little bit about the the behind-the-scenes stuff. And we'll discuss the plot, the kaijus, the characters, the technical side, and give our final thoughts on the film. Before we get into the the thick of it, I want to issue a drinking game. Oh, God. So please, if you are listening to this podcast while you are driving, do not participate in this game. If you're just... Playing, if you're just playing this podcast when you're home, uh, playing a game in the background, just, as long as you're safe within your own home and you're of legal drinking age, please participate. So you're going to want some some soft stuff, like some beers, some wine coolers, or Smirnoff Ice, which is my favorite drink to party with. Please sponsor us, Smirnoff Ice. I kind of doubt that. <laughs> be amazing though i've never seen them sponsor any podcast okay but please if you're listening okay or get, get some of that and then get some hard stuff some tequila some whiskey we're not trying some to kill vodka. we're not trying to kill them hear me out i'm gonna describe the rules okay so we trust me i'm sure you've caught the foreshadowing we're not the biggest fans of the godzilla anime trilogy yeah we're gonna say this right now like I'm sure you guys know in the Godzilla Phantom, this has been a very divisive film series. Some love it and some completely despise it. And we are, like, we are leaning towards the hate section. I'm more angrily disappointed, if anything. I'm I'm actually genuinely mad. I'm I'm kind of pissed. <laughs> Specifically at the third one. So let's do this drinking game. So, so the drinking game is, anytime me or Chris say the word idiot... You take a sip, not no, don't down it, don't drink the whole thing, but take a sip of your beer, your wine cooler, or your Smirnoff, or whatever. A sip. But, the next thing, this is what the hard stuff is for, anytime we say the word boring, you take a shot, alright? We're getting ready to fucking party, let's go, hit me with the behind the scenes, Chris. Well, first we gotta summarize the film. Oh, alright, alright. So. Shows how much I pay attention. <laughs> alright, so, in the early 90s. A kaiju attack affect Earth. Many kaijus were attacking humanity, one after another. And then finally, the king of the monsters arrives. Desperate, humanity, roughly a few thousand uh, humans, with the alliance of several alien species who tried to help out but failed, left Earth to find another planet. After 10 years, or was it 20? I believe it was 20 years. After 20 years of trying to find a hospitable planet, they, they were desperate. Low on resources, low on water. People are actually committing suicide in the film. Like, it, it gets dark in the beginning. They realize they need to come back. So they come back to Earth, but due to the space travel, it's been 20,000 years. And they've seen Earth is completely alien. It feels like humanity has completely died off. The planet is hostile and inhospitable and is ruled by Godzilla. As well as a growing conspiracy amongst the alien races on humanity's fate. As well as maybe Earth is not completely alone when it comes to humanity. As a growing threat arrives in both a city on the edge of battle... And a planet eater arrives. 
And man, these films were disappointing. Whoo boy. Okay. Hope you still got those bottles out, people, because I'm going to break it out for the first time. These films, if you're familiar with writing technique and a lot of things involving, like, structure to a thing, I would describe these three films as an idiot plot. For anyone who don't know what that is, I'm going to be merciful by not just spamming you with drinks. So, to describe what I just said is, an idiot plot is when a film, a book, a video game, the plot of this piece of media cannot happen the way it does, and it only happens the way it does because every character involved is an idiot. Yeah. So, going on the behind the scenes, the film is directed by Kuban Shizuno, who, the only other stuff he's worked on is a lot of Detective Conan films. <laughs> Really? Yeah. Wow. Apparently, he worked on... Um, I used to watch a ton of Detective Conan when I was, like, 14. Yeah. As well, he worked on... He helped work on the first Ava film, mm -hmm. uh, Ava 1.0, uh, the first of the rebuilt films, and another person where I don't know he's worked on, because I'm, I'm looking up the Wikipedia for the anime trilogies, and he doesn't even have an article. Wow. Uh, Hiroyuki Sashita, and that name is going to be brought up a lot. Okay. And another name is going to be brought up a lot, if uh, the actual big name in terms of behind the scenes is the writer, Gen Irobuchi, who has worked on some very, very, really good animes. Such as Madoka Magica. Madoka Magica, Psychopaths, um, Fate Zero. And, sad to say, for those who don't know, his nickname is the uh, Earl Butcher. Uh, Earl Butcher. Gen the Butcher, yeah. Yeah, Gen the Butcher. And, um, apparently, according to you, you told me this, because you learned about it from other, uh... I, I, I was, I was on some anime, anime tuber, I mean, I, mean, I was gonna say anime tuber, but I realized some people might not know what that is. Yeah. So I was listening to anime YouTubers, and someone brought up this idea, I can't remember who, if you find who, please remind me in the comments, that Gen has a curse on him, that it feels like everything he does, it's like, a, it's like a coin flip. He'll make something great, then he'll make something shitty, then he'll make something great again, Repeat. But the problem with um, going, let's start with plot. We have three films. <sighs> three films where the events that break down are really only enough to make maybe two. Honestly, honestly, with the way these films transpire, it feels so much time is wasted. Like, I can just, the, the thing about to be these films, there's three films and they feel like one gigantic act. It's, it's all exposition. It's paced awfully. Honestly, I can't imagine ever watching a Godzilla film and walking out describing it as boring. And it's not even that we were bored waiting for the monsters. Because here's my, my taste of Godzilla films are actually strong. Here's one thing about these anime films. We're going to just say this right now. Um, the main point of these anime films, according to um, the staff, is they wanted to make a kaiju focused film because when Toho first committed uh, commissioned these films back in 2016 they, they wanted a heavily human character focused kaiju film because of the success of Shin but here's the thing Shin was intelligently written it was poignant well paced well paced it was intelligent and it had some things to say Yes. We'll, this film has none of that we'll go to that but just going to the plot um, the first film one thing that annoyed me is we had this really cool idea of a kaiju post-apocalypse, and and we never see it. We no, we get a we get a motion comic in the beginning. Yeah, but does that count? I mean, according to the uh, creators, that counts. But well, the creators can fuck off. They also, made these movies. Also, here's the thing that annoyed me about this: they said they want to make a bunch uh, new films for new viewers. Mm -hmm. Then why include classic kaiju's? No, like start classic with, kaiju's that they're not gonna get the reference to. No, like, yeah, like... And if you're saying it, if, if they're gonna defend that and say it's for the fans, well, you already alienated fans by making these movies so fucking boring and shitty. Or completely alienating them. So, the film opens with a montage of kaiju tags and very obscure kaijus. Like, we had uh, Kamakuras, the giant mantis, uh, Dogura, the giant space jellyfish, uh, Orga... Orga, who again we mentioned earlier, is only in one film there's, other than this as a cameo. Uh, there is a we see the skeletons of Rodan, which, by the way, I, you, have, you it took me it took you a few minutes to even realize. I paused the scene yeah. to show you the Rodan uh, skeleton, and it didn't even look like Rodan. It literally looks like someone took a skeleton of a Pteranodon and just drew over it and post put it on there. <laughs> and then we get Godzilla, and we don't see the apocalypse. It says like oh, it, like brings in hellfire and brings in all this stuff. But the thing is. 
we don't we don't really see that like we don't get the stake of this apocalypse so we can't even like we barely get to know this world so we don't like the main character's goal um at the end of the day they want to kill godzilla and take earth back that's the entire goal of this entire anime trilogy take earth back so, so does that mean we're transitioning to talking about the characters now uh, we're still talking about the plot okay but uh plot can be uh driven by a character right and um like you still gotta have a goal for the story mm-hmm but the problem is with the first film and onwards, it's just that uh, I gotta I gotta collect my thoughts because this is really frustrating. The problem is, and you pointed this out, and uh, Anthony from Something Ghoulish pointed this out. Even if they've killed Godzilla, there is nothing to get from this entire mission. For those of you who haven't watched the film, when we first get on Earth, they're walking around in like spacesuits because the air isn't even <clears throat> breathable. They can't breathe. They need suits. And someone's suit is breached and cut open because he brushes past a bush. And the plants are like... They, They're like steel. They evolve. Be- okay, can I just say one, uh, one little thing? Evolution. Yeah, the entire planet would not be that different in only 20,000 years. Especially the fact that the plants evolve to cater to Godzilla. <laughs> He's indestructible. He doesn't need anything to be catered to. Yeah, like what the fuck does he need? He Apparently he, he doesn't even need to eat. He just runs off the nuclear energy inside him. Uh, no, apparently, um, according to, uh, I believe Seshita, um, also, uh, we'll talk about Godzilla as it goes on, as we talk about Kaiju themselves, but the thing about this is the, the first film is basically, they find Godzilla, I'm gonna put quotation marks, a Godzilla, God- a Godzilla, they find him, uh, they kill him, uh, one of, like, Haro's allies, remember, remember Blonde General guy from the first film that got blown up? Yeah. So, um, their plan was basically, they, they had this idea of basically, um, find Godzilla, put, like, a bomb inside him, because apparently he has a force field, for some reason. God, that was such a fucking stupid addition. Why? 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 Godzilla's already so durable and resistant to damage. Why does he need this fucking force field thing? I mean, like, they it's already- It's so dumb. It's, this like, this Godzilla is both the most OP and yet the most boring. And we'll talk about that later, but... So they find Godzilla, and they eventually kill them. Also, I gotta say one thing. Um, as we go on, uh, one... I know this character is starting to become a fan favorite, but I think he's more annoying. Um, Metfees. Or we're gonna call him the Space Elf. Space Elf. Also, we got uh, We'll talk about the characters, but we have our main character, uh, Haro, which... I refuse to call him that name, so let's call him Diet, uh, Diet Aaron. Diet Aaron Jaeger. Diet Aaron. He's let's, gonna kill all the Godzillas! Yeah. So Diet Aaron uh, come up with his plan, basically blow up Godzilla from the inside out, and they eventually succeed in a really boring action sequence. It's basically fly around Godzilla, shoot at him, fly around him, make him fall in a, a rock pit, and just like have these really um, boring looking mechs that look like something from Avatar and um, James Cameron's Avatar. J- James Cameron's Avatar and um, put these like harpoons, and Godzilla will eventually blow himself up, and they succeed. But it turns out that they killed Minya. Yeah. Like, basically, the Godzilla they were fighting for most of the film was a spawn. They said, like, this Godzilla spawned off Godzilla. So it's like, they reproduce asexually, like, what they described Shin could do. Like, it feels like this Godzilla is, like, Shin, but a completely different design the way to describe some of his abilities. I don't know. And so we get Godzilla, which is... Uh, well, Godzilla Go- Earth. Godzilla Earth. Earth. called in promotion. A, the, this is so annoying. Like, what is it with Toho dick measuring Godzilla's? Yeah. Like, they already had the tallest with Shin, but we had this kilometer tall Godzilla, and he basically wrecks shit, and we go to the second film, which we meet, uh, the only thing I kind of like about these anime films, the Hotua. The Hotua, yes. The, uh, the Mothra tribe. The Shobijin. The sh- uh, we meet the, uh, the Shobijin, the Mothra twins, uh, Mina and Miana, which we'll talk about them when we talk about characters, but I really wish the film was about them. Yeah, they're, they're infinitely more fascinating than Haruo. And... I guess that's it. no one point is out. These films are oddly xenophobic. Yeah, like there's a lot of like especially with the second film trust with the humans and the, the well not specifically the exif because like it feels like we only see like three exif throughout the entire film. We only see two. Yeah, it's like Metfees and the older one. Yeah, but the Bill Saludo there, the, there's like five of them. The Bill Saludos are basically and then the rest are just humans. Yeah, the Klingons basically. Um, we got the Space House and the Klingons. Uh. I- <laughs> Yeah, so the Bill of Saluto, or as I like to call them, the Baloney Salutes. The Baloney Salutes. So the Baloney Salutes uh, are, like, for some reason, I have no idea why. Like, you're working with two alien species that look like humans. 
That, so you mean another species that were humans that have evolved in the 20,000 years to, like, have glitter on them or something. Mothra glitter. They're, they're Mothra people. But yet, for some reason, you're extremely race, like, really oddly xenophobic and racist towards them and, and like, distrust them and there for, so, for no established reason, really. And, and they're so shocked that... They're like, you know, the way they are, like, oh, they're so primitive. Like, have you not seen a post-apocalypse story? And, and, and also, just like, I, I, like, I don't want to, like, delve too deep into this, really, but it's so strange to me how I can't tell half the time in these films if any of the metaphors they're going for are intentional or not. We'll talk about themes as we go on, but... No, this... I, I want to address this right now, because you brought up the xenophobia. Like, is that intentional? How, like, in the past, like, people would be, like, killed or uh, treated poorly or enslaved just because they look different. <laughs> colonialism. Like, yeah, like, is, is this supposed to be commentary on colonialism or is it just them being dicks? Because it really doesn't amount to anything. It feels it feels so, like, like many of the other things this film comments on, it feels hollow. It feels really backhanded. Like, it's just kind of like, eh, we'll, we'll, we'll fix it later. Or, or like, oh, uh, we're, we're, we'll think about it later. Like, the, the audience will, will know but it feels so empty. Like, let's address it so we look like we have, we're deeper and we're smarter. Brownie points. Yeah. It's like the fucking, like, J.K. Rowling making Dumbledore gay, but it affects absolutely fucking nothing. And, like, it, if if this is the point of talking about, you know, um, colonialism, which has been done before in, like, you know, King Kong, and that would be a great thing, but I don't know. And going back to the plot of the film. Or other films that, like, use, like, aliens to, like, talk about racism, like District 9. Yeah. But the, going back to the plot, so they meet the Hotua, act unnecessarily xenophobic towards them, and we're going to talk, we'll talk about kaiju, like, uh, kaijus, but they, dis uh, we gotta just talk this as a plot point. So, the Bill Saludo, they're a tech-based, uh, society, they're known, they're very technologically, uh, like, they basically te treat technology like religion. religion. I don't know about that. I didn't really feel I, a very religious feel off the Bill Saludo. Definitely very zeal uh, zealous about technology. They're very much where, like, oh, we'll, we'll solve the problem with technology or we'll make new technology to fix it. But I, I didn't feel a religious vibe. Most may, Maybe I didn't notice because I was too... Annoyed. Or I, I didn't notice because, like, the really heavy-handed religious symbolism is, the, the, is saved for the EXIF. Yeah. Or the space elves. So they discover what I legitimately say is the worst thing. Like, the second film is, is the worst of the entire. And it's because it's one thing. This is, like... I'm, I don't know if Japan has, like, anti-false um, advertisement laws, but someone should have said something about this film. They discover Mechagodzilla City. Ugh! So, they explained in the past, they were trying to make, the Bell Zaludo came in to help uh, humanity in exchange for, like, hey, if we can kill Godzilla, can we, like, you know, rent out your ha your your planet? <laughs> and they try to create Mechagodzilla, which, for some reason, ne they never explain how, but... I, it never activates. Like there are Godzilla like blew it up before they could activate it for the first time. No, not even before it blew it up. They try to turn it on, but it doesn't turn on. Ugh. And I, I'm, I, there was a series of prequel novels that a lot of fans say are really good, and I'm guess it explains that I really, I really wish um, someone translate those uh, prequel novels because um, I really wish those were the anime films because there was so many cool stuff. Are, are we gonna talk about Mechagodzilla in the the kaiju section? We. I or should we talk about it here? Let's just talk about the the role in the plot. Okay. And then we can talk okay. about Me Mechagodzilla himself. So, the thing with Mechagodzilla City. If you follow us on Gar at G GargantuCast on Twitter, you would have seen the post that Chris, is, Chris made of the pictures of me live watching City on the Edge of Battle and Planet Eater. I was watching those for the first time earlier this week. Yes. And Chris took photos of me of my live reactions. And I'll let you decide. One of them is fake. Which one is it? No one will know. No one will know. Only one of them is fake. But all the others. So the thing with Mechagodzilla City. Okay. So it's made of this pseudoscience bullshit nanometal, which is self-repairing. Which apparently the AI has evolved to basically not only... It says it was repairing itself, but there was just the head of Mechagodzilla. And it decided, like, hey, let's build a city. Like, What? It's like, I remember, I think Anthony said it. Compared it to, like, what if you, oh, we forgot to turn off the 3D printer, so it just kept making more. Yeah. But why? Why did it make a fucking city? And it, is the AI an idiot, too? What the fuck is this? No, AI is des it does what it's designed to do. Uh, and if the AI was designed to make Mechagodzilla to fight Godzilla, 
when it was destroyed, shouldn't it be programmed to just make another fucking Mechagodzilla? Mm. This is so dumb. But no, it makes these giant metal balls and these this fucking you know, city. It's, like, it's stupid. And what makes it worse is, guess what they decided to do? They have this this substance, nanometal, which, by the way, is, like, said every five seconds. Like, oh, God. If you watch City on the Edge of Battle, that's its own drinking game. Take a shot every time they fucking say nanometal. It, you will die. Like... The problem is, you have the medium anime, and you have CG, and you have something that's, like, basically a CG putty. Yeah. So, they decide, like, <laughs> we need to kill, let's kill Godzilla again, even though, at this point, it's basically, it's a, it's a, it's an unwinnable situation. But, sure, you have, like, unlimited supply of nano, uh, nano machines. They do the exact same plan as the first film, just scaled it for a bigger Godzilla. Which... Which, wow, way to waste our fucking time. Couldn't just do, like... And the vultures were kind of neat. Couldn't you just, I don't know, make another Mechagodzilla? Or... <laughs> like, yeah. also, if you see the poster for City on the Edge of Battle, Mechagodzilla's in the background looming over Godzilla. Very ominously. But no, no, that doesn't happen. And it's a giant fucking lie. And the problem... With this is one thing that comes out of nowhere in the second film that we'll talk about with characters is there was a female care uh, human uh, which her name is a uh, Yuko but she has so little personality she's the and girl. she's basically a just she's basically just a plot device and drive for Haruo as a character so we just called her girl because she's literally there and this just annoys me in just fiction in general where you just have to have a sub a subplot with involving romance it's it's stupid like I like romance but you got to write it really well and. Um, well, actually, you gotta have both parts of the fucking relationship be actual people and not one, not just a block of wood with some tits on it. Yeah, and so they have their plan, but the problem is, is that it turns out the Bill of Saludo were evil for out of nowhere. Oh, I mean, yeah, they just pulled, pulled, like, oh, we can't just do the exact same thing even though we were doing it already. And, and, so let's just have the Bill of Saludo be weirdly suicidal and then get super pissed off when Haruo is like, no, I'm not going to kill myself. And it's like, like, you, like the whole idea is like, in order to fight a monster, you must become a monster. It's like, where'd that come from? You Fuck guys... out of here. And it's like, they're in the first film, they were okay. And they're, also, in like, in the fucking third film, when Haruo bails out of killing himself, like, the Bill of Saludo gets so fucking pissy that they're willing to hold the entire human race hostage yeah. until Haruo fucking sacrifices himself for his sin or something. And and the thing like is... Like, they want him to fucking seppuku right in front of them to, for some kind of a appeasal. And the climax of the film is... The second film is they try to stop Godzilla with these admittedly cool mechs called the Vultures. I will secede and say yes, the Vulture mechs look pretty damn cool. And they try to uh, stop Godzilla and they do the exact same plan, but instead of blowing up, Godzilla basically... Turns into a giant oven. Turns into a giant oven. So the Bill Saluto were like, we got to like aerial d uh, bomb against them and got to get absorbed in the nanometal to defeat Godzilla. And, okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Another point of the idiot plot. So... Uh, Bellaby is one of the Bill of Saludo. Yeah. Uh, Bellaby and Galagoo. <laughs> the fucking names of these characters. Is it that hard to come up with alien names in fiction? Just like, ah, like, uh, just, just bash your head in the keyboard and that's his name. Like, I, I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna pull some names out of my ass and come up with names. So we got Bellaby. And Galagoo. Or so, Galagoo. Also, Bellaby, they, they go through his name multiple times and, like, it feels like even... I'm about to make fun of his name a bunch for the rest of this film, the rest of this review, uh, but genuinely, it feels like even the characters don't know his name because they switch between Bella B and Bella Bay several times. So, Bebe's kids. So, so fucking, uh, so Barbecue Sauce and, uh, Galagoff, um, are just out of, out of nowhere demanding everyone kill themselves, uh. Be absorbed in the animal. Gir girl, Diet Aaron, and, uh, Bella Booty. Yeah. are in their vultures, and they're supposed to dive-bomb Godzilla in a weird, like... Angle? Ang like, and apparently that'll kill him. That'll make him blow up. But, like, apparently, Bear in the Big Blue House <laughs> is so on board with this, he's, like, already coated in the nanometal, but fucking Go Go Gadget is, like, also, like, covering himself in nanometal for no fucking reason. And this shows kind of, like, the xenophobic of this film. It's just, like, all the aliens are, like... Exactly it, they turn the evil. They turn evil. Why are all the aliens evil? It's stupid. Like, it's a tradition amongst the anime and Godzilla films. Like, you could at least 
humanize him. It's 2019. I don't know. It just seems very strange that they, they just turn heel like that. And um, <laughs> no, but I, I got to talk about this suicide thing. Yes. Honestly, with the way the film presents it, why? Why do they have to be coated in nanometal? I get what it. difference would it make? And like at the end, the, of the machines, the vultures themselves are already made of nanometal, and they can be and they can be autopiloted. What is the point? Why do the pilots have to be coated in nanometal? But you don't understand. It's like like if they're already gonna dive bomb and kill themselves. No, 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 no. Mm-hmm. Remember what uh, babe, I believe Bebe's kid said it best. In order to fight a monster, you must become a monster. Humanity you is... You have to coat yourself in iron Play-Doh. Which, by the way, the effect looked awful. It looked really dumb. Like It's j- like a filter. It, it, it <laughs> looks like... Uh, imagine the world's shittiest One Piece fan video of Luffy coating himself in armament hockey, and that's what it looks like. Yeah, it was a pretty bad effect. But the problem is, with this, is just... First of all, it's completely redundant. Like, this second film, is re- n- there's barely any consequences. It, it's so pointless. And we're going to talk about which the third film, which not only does the most amount of stuff, but it does the most amount of stuff that's infuriating. Like, not boring, infuriating. Honestly, if any of you guys are fans of Double Toasted in their review score, I'd give the first two films some old bullshits, but the third film honestly made me so angry, I have to give it a solid fuck you. And the, the plot is basically a gigantic... It feels like... So, um, the directors of these films, uh, either Seshita or, well, let me get the other last name, I'm gonna butcher it. Again, it all, uh, like, to, while Chris is looking that up, I, I feel, again, it's more a bunch of hollowness. Like, if we make the bad guy a religious person, maybe we'll, people will think we're really deep. Which, it's not, like, like, Genny Robucci is an open atheist, mm-hmm. and honestly, it feels like the writing of this film is, like, he, either it was just, he didn't care, and he just wrote in a day, he was rushed, and he just decided, like, fuck it, I'm just gonna put my themes that I, things I don't like in society. Honestly, like, it's so empty, it has no real commentary in it, it feels like something an angry 14-year-old atheist yeah. would write. So, um, so, I don't know, the thing with these, uh, the third film... So we got Sashita and uh, Shizuno. And when I say angry 14-year-old atheist, I mean like trench coat to school fedora tipping atheist. So uh, what was I talking about? The directors? The directors, yeah. So um, with the the third film, one thing, it seems like they're really hyping up this film. Because basically, Mm -hmm. in terms of just action and stuff (coughs) and plot resolution. They kept promoting it with... Uh, a, a film that could only be told in the form of animation. No, that was the, when the anime series was starting. Uh, um, and, oh, we're going to talk about more about a lot of these Oh, uh, we'll get to that. So, the thing about um, the third film is that it's just one gigantic, pretentious, philosophical bullshit. It's it's all but like, it still feels so fake deep. It's they say it they say so little while saying so fucking much. I, 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 they I, talk for hours but never say anything meaningful. Say what you will, I call I know you're not the biggest fan of Ava, but mm-hmm. at least Ano, the stuff he was saying is this at least he had a central theme. Well, like I may not be a fan of Ava just because I just I'm I just am I'm just not. I'm, but you well, like I can at least say like things meant things. Like and I, like there was actual commentary and looks into things like mental health, religion, and like child abuse. Like actual things were discussed, and it's it's very clear. Yes, and, and if, like if and you, like actual like commentary is made. But this is like me just walking outside with a fucking sign that says God is dumb. And, like, people look at me like I'm a genius. Like, what is with this low bar acceptance bullshit? Like, it's not deep. There's no commentary. What is it saying? Religion is bad? Well, why? Like, I I don't think looking at cult-like activity is, like, because it's not even like Metfees is, like, a genuine, like, fucking, like, religious, like, pastor or something. It feels like all the people convert to his religion because the plot said so. Yeah. He himself didn't really do anything to convert people. And spe- they just kind of are. And speaking of, so Metfees is the main villain of these entire animes. It's Honestly, it's barely about Godzilla, but it's mostly about Haro and Metfees. You gotta yes. admit, that's the central conflict of this entire series. And honestly, I'd be okay with that if the film weren't called Godzilla. Or at least these characters are so compelling... That it overrides even the kaiju folks. But Aaron's a te- but a diet Aaron Yeager is a fucking terrible protagonist. Which we'll talk about with characters. But the thing is, the plan itself, so it turns out the uh, the space elves, the Exif, their plan is 
they worship Ghidorah. Ghidorah's their god. He's like this giant eldritch abomination. And basically they... Lear- and and they're, they're basically a doomsday cult. They, ba- they, 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 they... I guess they got really hard when they saw Ghidorah destroy their home planet. So they want to do it again to Earth. As well as they basically... Their, their, their religion is centered around math. And they saw... Remember that little doohickey they had? Yeah. It's basically a gigantic calculator. And remember, uh, and, they, and they used it to like they like they saw into the future, and they saw that the universe will die. So it's basically we might as well just ex- expect ac- accept our death and just embrace and destruction and speed it up. And like it's beautiful, it's it's nature. We are destined to be destroyed. So let us worship beautiful end destruction of all and all of its beauty. Blah blah blah. That honestly, this entire film. Like again, it's a lot of flowery dialogue that in the end doesn't really mean anything. Yeah, it gets frustrating and it's not, I have nothing against a kaiju film trying to explore different themes. Like, I'm gonna say right now, aside from the original Gojira, which explores, it's a huge human story. Commentary on the destructive of atomic weapons. As well as showing the destruction from a human angle. Mm -hmm. Uh, Shin was, had really strong human characters. Uh, GMK had strong human characters and I know there's Godzilla, but the Gamera trilogy has phenomenal human characters for kaiju films. And the problem is, is that with these films, the characters are the central focus oh, of the are plot. Are we at characters now? Uh, n- almost there. Okay. Um, but going back to the plot, and these characters are so dumb that basically a lot of stuff that happens to them is deserved. And going back to Metfis' plan, he's basically summoning Ghidorah just to eat Earth. And a, I will say one thing about the film. Ghidorah summoning was awesome. The, the the cultist summoning of Ghidorah, no matter how like weird and silly he looks when he actually comes out, like mm-hmm. his weird fucking elongated face. Alaskan bullworm. And his his oddly shaped mouth that he can't close all the way because yeah. apparently Ghidorah is related to Gyarados <laughs> from Pokemon. <laughs> uh, giant golden Gyarados. But um, I guess we'll get to that with characters. I was going to talk about how Metfees' plan doesn't make sense. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'd say the cult scene when like, Ghidorah is like, in the shadows and he's like ripping part piece, like, pieces out of people. Like, you're a huge Lovecraft fan. Yes, I, I'm a fan of a lot of uh, Eldritch Abomination and Lovecraft writing. Not the uh, person. No, no, not... H.P. Lovecraft, as a person, was not was not a good guy. No, no. Good, good writer, but bad. Good, good writing, very foundational, absolutely n- necessary for the creation of cosmic horror. Terrible person, though. Yeah. And the thing about um, that cult scene is... For the first time in a long time with this anime trilogy, there was a presence with Ghidorah. Ghidorah felt imposing. It, it felt absolutely terrifying. Especially, like, even though that's the, the the death noodle was a little silly, the whole, like, I when they were in the satellite and it was getting blown up and the how space and time was warped and there was a time where, like, they basically, they were already, their system was saying they were already dead. Before they had died, yes. That was creepy. It, it, if, it, it made... Ghidorah feel, like, imposing and actually, like, a threat for this indestructible, super 300-meter-tall Godzilla. But the plan of Metfis is basically he was trying to summon Ghidorah through belief. Like, apparently Ghidorah's power comes through belief. Or, like, like the way, the way Metfis described it, it's like he's power... Like, he was using Haruo's rage to kill Godzilla as, like, a conduit to, like, form Ghidorah. But it didn't really matter because he already had the cult. But, like... No, I, I fuck it. Fuck the structure. I'm talking about this now because it's relevant. Okay. Okay. Metfees' plan makes no sense. No, this is part of the plot. Like, this, like plan- this doesn't fucking work. Metfees wants to destroy Earth by summoning Ghidorah, right? Yes. Like, I, please, cr- answer these questions, Chris, because I need to make sure that I wasn't taking fucking crazy pills. Okay. Okay. So Metfees summons Ghidorah. Yeah. Ghidorah ensnares Godzilla. And G- Godzilla's swinging a bunch of hits, and, and they're phasing right through Ghidorah. Ghidorah, can, Ghidorah hurt Ga- can hurt Godzilla, but Godzilla cannot hurt Ghidorah. Threatening. And we see, because before Ghidorah attacks Godzilla, he blows up the satellite with the humans on it. Godzilla, right? Then Godzilla tries to hit him with the atomic breath, but it curves. It, it curves. Like, it, like Ghidorah, like, <laughs> psychically blasts it out of the way. But here's... So Ghidorah seems perfectly capable of destroying shit... And blowing shit up. And was sucking Godzilla's life force. And was killing, it was came the closest to killing Godzilla in this anime trilogy. So, it seems like Ghidorah <laughs> is perfectly capable of destroying shit in his weird metaphysical form. Sure. So, what the fuck does the anger, boner, Haruo thing, how does that improve it? If anything, it made Ghidorah weaker. 
Because the moment... Met Fees was too busy dealing with Haruo, making him an open target. Like, genuinely? And when when Haruo gives in to his rage and gouges out fucking Met Fees' eyes, and Ghidorah gets a physical body and, and Godzilla's able to fight back, Ghidorah's dead in, like, 20 seconds. So, trying to give him a physical body ends up killing Ghidorah. Like, he was more powerful without you. So, what the fuck? This is the dumbest plan. Like, and if, if if that wasn't supposed to happen, you didn't... The film did not make that clear. Uh, yeah. Like, I wasn't the point to make Haruo so pissed off and, like, use that as, like, a conduit. His want and rage... It, like, give in to your rage, Haruo. Hate Godzilla. Your your want to kill Godzilla will make Ghidorah destroy the universe. La. Worship him as your god. Yeah, it... it what the fuck? He seemed perfect. Like, why? Why did he need to do anything else? Ghidorah was doing fine. All right, now we can... So, yeah, so that's the plot, and... I'm genuinely angry. All right, now we're going to talk about the kaijus. So, what do you think of the G-Man in this film? Um, I think... Okay, just... Like, it's funny you brought up the Toho dick measuring contest with Godzilla movies. Yeah. Because here's the thing. At the time of Shin Godzilla's release, that was the tallest Godzilla. Yeah. Go- Goji's final form in Shin was the tallest Godzilla. Because the year, because literally a few years before, like, the American legendary version, Monster Rose Godzilla was the tallest. So I guess Toho didn't want to be uh, out second best. Second best. And they already did it. But then we have Godzilla Earth, and so... Like, but, like, here's the thing. Yes. I don't think a bigger Godzilla is a scarier Godzilla. And the thing, yes, exactly. And I'll be totally honest. The animation did not make him seem that, like, the problem is, he didn't seem that big. Even when we see Godzilla Actually, Earth. yeah. Like, the scale is really off. It's because there's only plants. No buildings, no ruins. Uh, nothing that we can really use as, like, scale. size comparison. And even when they're in the vultures, they still, like, like, with how big Godzilla is in this movie, they should be specs. Yeah. But, like, no, we can see them pretty clearly all the time and when, the, yeah. even in the far shots. It really doesn't make Godzilla feel all that gigantic. And there wasn't really that many creative angles with this Godzilla. Like, with the, with, especially with... The point of animation is you can, <laughs> contr- you can control where the camera is. You can also control how things move because you're... It's, it's animation. It's fictional. But the, dude, the thing is, the biggest problem with the um, this Godzilla design is... So, uh, I'll look it up. So, the re- there's also a thing about this Godzilla. Um, that during the, uh, the marketing, they say he's part plant. And the reason for this is um, the director, Shizuno, was basically modeled Godzilla after plant life. because mm. He, he says, does have a very weird bark-like texture on his body. Yes, and it's because of that, is mostly, at the end of the day, what is the life forms that stay alive for the longest? Trees. Exactly. So he basically said if trees are meant to be the ultimate life form, make Godzilla based off in you know, that kind of life. I mean, also the spines on his back are oddly like the leaf, leaf looking. Yeah. It's... Okay, but I want to say one thing that also is the final nail in the coffin of what makes this a very unimposing Godzilla. He's so slow. slow. Like the thing He's of... slow. Like it like I get that he's the biggest Godzilla, but like Godzilla Fuck was this. Fuck Godzilla this. was like a a bruiser. He'd throw monsters around. He's punching them. He's fucking I mentioned it in the last episode, but Godzilla sliding on his tail, throwing fucking drop kicks. Like well, this one, he just lumbers around like a fat drunk. And the thing about this that annoys me is the whole idea that this can only be told in animation. The thing is, the problem that Polygon is not meant for fast action, and unless they're in ships or unless, in like robots. Yeah. And the thing about when they announced this, I was hoping like, holy crap, we're going to see. A, I was hoping to see a Godzilla design. That will be like only be done in like animation. Like this is something like his his anime his movements are super fluid. Something a suit can't do. Yeah, like and a lot of posability that like a guy in a fifty pound rubber suit couldn't do. But the thing is, this Godzilla could totally be a suit. I like he, with, with the little amount of shit he actually does. This could totally be a suit. And this Godzilla does nothing. He just spams the atomic breath. He doesn't throw. The only time he ever like throws a like a. A hit with his hands is in the in the fight with Ghidorah. Yeah, and, and I use fight with Ghidorah very fucking loosely. And this Godzilla is like they say he's <laughs> really powerful, but he doesn't come across that way. He has no presence. Like I know a lot of people will say like, "Oh, what was Shin Godzilla? Shin had presence. 
Shin was terrifying. Shin, you like, felt the destruction that Shin was bringing around. And the thing about Shin is, yeah, and his, he usually just walks straight forward. But the thing is, the reason why they did that, so you're kind of in a state of, I wouldn't say comfort, but definitely you're not expecting the atomic breath scene. Because when Godzilla did the atomic breath, he was just lashing out. He like whipped it all around. He, he wasn't just shoot one thing, shoot another thing. He shot one beam and then just kept moving it around, slicing buildings all over the place like he's a fucking a, gigantic death lightsaber. And it was just a huge shock and it's like expectation. But this Godzilla doesn't do anything besides the... It's that, just kind of like, whoom, pew, and then it's, eh, that's it. Yeah, and uh, like I, I, I will say I do like the design, but it's a good design... That I didn't want for an anime film. This would have been a really cool suit. Or, or an anime film that like maybe was like a, a mini series. But not film. Like wasn't it supposed to be a series at the start? Apparently it was going to be a anime series. But apparently <laughs> it, it would have been a better investment to do it as uh, three films. Bro, funny about investment. See, Young Edge of Battle is the lowest grossing Godzilla film of all time. Fucking deserves it because of how boring it is. Hope you yeah. haven't put away that bottle, Sonny. Yeah. But um, the thing about um, this Godzilla is just that he lacks presence. He's just kind of there. He's a shape. He, he could have just made him a mountain. Like, yeah, he might as well have been a mountain that shoots lasers. He yeah. might as well have been Mount fucking Sauron. He should have been... He might as well have just been Sauron from Lord <laughs> of the Rings. Yeah. So, uh, what do you think of Mecha Godzilla? Trash. He was... No, you're not wrong. He was trash. He was actually just a head. Like, not even that. Like, even if... Like, like we saw the model. We've seen... They made a figure. We've seen the art of what this anime series, Mechagodzilla, was going to look like. Even if he did show up, he looks like ass. He looks like a Bayformer. He he looks like... Yeah, he looks like a Transformer from a Michael Bay movie. Or he looks like a bunch of fucking battleships fucking... Ser there's so many unnecessary spikes and sharp angles and, and all these like metal rods and which, like what the fuck why couldn't he look clean smooth like something like Kiryu or even the original Mechagodzilla looks more practical or compared to this thing because he's made a nano metal make him look a T-1000 yeah like a, like the T-1000 Terminator like he could be super fluid and moving around like because he's like a liquid metal he'd be fucking nuts but no, we, we... Like, he could pull an organ and, like, start absorbing Godzilla into the metal. You know, oh, like, so apparently this me the Mecha Godzilla design, the anime version, was modeled after, like, a type of sea slug because uh, the console artist said that he find he wanted to find an animal that was, like, unapproachable. He wanted to make this Mecha Godzilla look very unapproachable. Why Why couldn't you just make it look scary? Or, 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 or like, a weapon? And not this dopey-looking, like, it, look it looks like you sliced three battleships into pieces and stacked them on top of each other. And it doesn't even matter because this Mechagodzilla design is not even seen in the film. Yeah, never shows up once. We it's, see its head. We see its head. And, uh, like, they even said it as an AI, but the thing is, the AI doesn't have a character. It doesn't do anything. It's barely an AI. It's like, the Bill Saluto did more stuff than the actual... The fucking baloney men use it. The, uh, the, blue, the blue man group. Fucking uh, guacamole man. Yeah. And it's just, I legitimately think that's false advertisement. That's really not cool. And the thing is, like... And they it, made a toy. They, they made a toy for a character that never shows up. That costed $90. <coughs> You're paying $90 for a fucking lie. All right, next we're going to talk about Ghidorah. Uh, wait, hold on. Can we talk about one that we see earlier? Uh, which one? Can we talk about Mothra for the three seconds she's in this film? <laughs> <coughs> oh, okay. Right, so we're dedicating uh, the, like, the, I'd say, like, the five seconds. All right, so you ready? Mothra stops World War II. The end. So All right, let's talk about Ghidorah now. All right, no, let, 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 let's explain to the pr people who haven't seen it. <laughs> so, in the third film, Metfees was trying to mind control uh, Diet Eren. And to, like, give in and worship Ghidorah. So, one of the side characters, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Adam, Exposition, as we call him. Yeah, Dr. Exposition and one of the Mothra twins basically go to Mothra's Egg, which is basically like a psychic telephone. It, it, like, if you're a big fan of Warhammer 40k, it's kind of like the uh, the Astronomicon. I don't know what that is, but if you're a... If, if you're a Warhammer fan, you'll get it. So they try to, like, psychically link to Haro, and through the, uh, the psychic visions, we see a silhouette of Mothra, which looks like a generic moth. Like, a but not even a butterfly. It, it, it's I just, just a shadow. Yeah. 
It's just like a golden silhouette. No, no it was all black. It wasn't golden. It was well, all the black. Sky, the clouds were like yellow in yeah. that scene. Yeah, but Mothra herself was just a black thing. And no flapping it, the wings. It literally looks like they just took a flat model. and just like, like, you know that cheap looking fucking gif of Ghidorah's full body flying at the camera that they use like three or four times? Yeah. It's like that, but it's with Mothra. Or um that scene from Jaws 3D where the shark was just, just kind of like slowly moving in no forward. No flapping of the tail. No, it's, it's just kind of like... It's just like getting dragged across the screen in a Photoshop. And like for the second most popular kaiju in the entire Godzilla series, that's a complete waste of her. Why even have her? Like legitimately. It's, it's a waste of time. And yeah, god damn it. Oof. So, Ghidorah. Ghidorah is a bunch of golden spaghetti. It, it, it's three golden Alaskan bullworms. <laughs> with, with fucking like faces that look like phalanx from Shadow of the Colossus. Or um, those like... Power things for your car, the clampers. Oh, fucking, like, uh, jumper cables? Jumper cables. <laughs> it's like three golden jumper cables. Yeah, they, they, that's basically what they did. So, Ghidorah was, like... Or, the, uh, you, you ever play, uh, uh, the NES Legend of Zelda 2? Like, you know the dragon, Barba, I think he's called? But, yeah. It looks like three golden Barbas. So, this is Ghidorah. Uh, Cole, what do you think? Um, I feel like, even though he did establish a presence with, like, the whole Eldritch Abomination thing... But he doesn't do anything, really. He, he just, just kind of, like, noodles his way around things and things shit blows up. And when he fights, got fights, quote-unquote. He, okay. The, f- okay. So, to- a lot of people like to compare, uh, got, uh, fucking, uh, kaiju fights to wrestling. And which I don't think is an unfair comparison. I mean, Toho specifically said, when he, when he asked this, got, uh, to make this Godzilla anime trilogy to the directors, they specifically said two things. Human focus, and, uh, there was a lot of, uh, mistranslation, uh, Matt Frank, uh, covered an article on his Tumblr. Uh, he had a friend do an actual translation who I believe she spoke Japan. He or she, it was anonymous. Spoke Japanese. Uh, spoke Japanese, yeah. Sorry, sorry about <laughs> you that. said spoke Japan. Sorry about that. Um, but they translated it and apparently Toho did not want to have Showa era wrestling matches. They didn't say no fights. They just didn't want something silly and goofy of Godzilla, you know, doing Kung Fu and stuff like that. Fine. We've seen that in the Heisei's films. We've seen that in the Millennium films. Sure. I personally think we could use a lot more of it. But with the tone of the film, sure. But like, it, it, with the direct, but this, this isn't a fight. Sashida, they took the opposite. <laughs> like, Sashida and Shiz- uh, Shizunu, uh, sorry, I keep mispronouncing his last name, took the... Tradition. Shithead 1 and Shithead 2. I don't... Nah. I don't want to be... Like I mean... I, I'm not. Okay, but I, I... Well, Chris looks it up again for, like, the third time. Shizuno. Shizuno. Okay. Uh... <laughs> they, they feel like they took the extreme of that like order oh we don't want wrestling fashion let's just have two arm wrestling matches that's basically what this fight was barely barely you know that you know what this fight is again if i were to compare it to a wrestling match this would be like if i don't know fucking old school like it's it's hulk hogan versus the undertaker right yeah it, it, like this is like if the undertaker just put hulk hogan in a chokehold and then lifted hulk off the ground and then it just held him there for, like, the entire match. And then right before the bell to end the final round, Hogan, like, reaches around and punches Undertaker in the head. And then um, and then he just punches Undertaker again, and then he wins. Yeah, it, it's just... It, it's like two... It's, it, it's one long grapple. It, it's one long grapple, then a punch, and then, like, two blasts of the atomic breath, and it's over. Yeah. It's pathetic. It's Hulk Hogan doing the atomic breath. I want to see that wrestling match. <laughs> No, no, but, like, it, it's absolutely, it's a goddamn joke. And it's, it, this is what a kaiju fight looks like by a 50-year-old mom who doesn't want their kids seeing anything violent. And the thing is, we had a model, they made a model of a body Ghidorah, but all we see are three long necks just uh, coming out of uh, black holes. And you know what it reminds me of? Mm. Remember that, what's the name of that dog from Undertale? Greater Dog? Uh, no. Lesser Dog. I think that's Lesser Dog. Lesser Dog. The one with the extending neck. Yeah, that's what I... Uh, his, his, he went where no dog went... Has <laughs> gone before. <laughs> oh, that's great. And, like, Ghidorah, like, as, like aside from the beginning, was just... Honestly, it was... Ghidorah was an extension of Metfees. Like, Metfees is the true monster of It was Metfees' pet noodles. Yeah. So, these kaiju... Metfees spaghetti. And it's still infuriates with all these kaiju cameos of kaijus we haven't seen in decades. And they only made like brief motion comic cameos. All right, we we are seriously pressing for time. Let, yeah. Let's let's move on to the next section. Characters. Let's let's wrap it up with characters. And let's. I feel like because this is a human focus, let's do characters and themes together. Okay. 
Because if you, like the like I'm I'm sorry if we've been dragging on, but like there's just so much to rant about. I genuinely am really annoyed by these films. Okay, so we're gonna talk about the the big boy Diet Aaron. What an unlikable prick of a protagonist. He is stupid. He's genuinely an idiot. Like he is so stubborn. With his goal to kill Godzilla that he doesn't realize. And I heard it. Oh, it's supposed to be a tragedy that... No! Tragedy involves being invested in a character and seeing their downfall. This is about as relatable as Oedipus Rex. Like, the, the fucker is just an asshole. He doesn't think about anything other than his revenge on Godzilla un- until, like, the last film. Like, near the end of it. And, like, he lets all this stupid shit happen. Cause it, and it's entirely his fault. And like, oh, let's keep going against Godzilla. And as Chris pointed out earlier, even if you win, what do you gain? Go terraform Mars or something. Could have gone or hang out with the the, the Hotua. Seriously, they're fine. It like I, I'm bringing up another plot hole that <laughs> I, I don't think the fi- if if the film brought it up, I didn't catch it. And uh, like, please, please, somebody correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think. There's a single time we see any character eating that is not food that came off the spaceship the humans came on or the soup that Metfees makes in the third film. Oh, God. Can I just say one thing about the soup? Yeah. How I almost had a heart attack watching oh, it. Oh, you thought, like, Miata was actually dead Yeah, so there, there's a scene where um, Haro has another hallucination with by Metfees, and there's a scene where Metfees was making soup for his cult. And uh, he kidnapped, uh, Mephi's kidnapped, was it Mina? It, it was, re- it was, it, it was I, Mina, wasn't it? it? I thought it was Miana. I think, yeah, Miana. Yeah. He kidnapped one of the monster twins, and there's a scene where uh, Haro goes to look in the soup, and you see uh, Miana in yeah, it. Like, her head's in the soup. And there's a scene where you see the cult eat the soup, mm. and the soup was uh, empty. I was like, oh my god, did they eat her? Yeah. Like, legit, that was, t- like, that was like, oh that, my that, god. That was super surreal and strange. Like, Considering this is Gen Irabuchi, he has done. Oh God, I I wouldn't be surprised if he decapitated another cute girl. <laughs> or um, uh, like he has an odd thing about characters being eaten. So I wouldn't. I legitimately. Yeah, I mean, mommy had her head bitten off in Monica. Spoilers. Oh, it's it's years old. True. Now. It's like what ten years old. Yeah, like fucking. If you haven't, if you're an anime fan, and you haven't watched Monica yet. What are you doing? <laughs> so um. The thing about... Um, you don't even have to be a fan of Magic Girl anime. It's so good it transcends its own genre. So the problem with uh, Haro as a character, as, as a person, it's just that... He's, he's an idiot. He he cares about killing Godzilla so much that he's he's unrelatable. Like, this is the problem, is that the whole point of these anime films is character focus. And the characters are unlikable. They're completely unlikable. They're either absolute pricks, douchebags, stupid beyond recognition. Exposition. Or they're or they just don't have a personality. They're just exposition dumps. Like, it's it's complete like I don't think there's a single likable character in this. And I know I, I, the only thing I like the only character that's And hard- like you can like a villain, but Metfees isn't as I said, Metfees isn't even a good villain because he's fucking stupid. Or he, and he's annoying because he's basically Genarabuchi's Soapbox. It's just like again, like he's he's depicted as uh like nihilism a, a, ass, asshole religion guy. He, he he's a doomsday cultist. That's all he is. And like if the film like but it feels like the film doesn't even depict him as a doomsday cultist. It makes it just seem like <laughs> he's this right. is this is how religious people are. Like but at the end are you the, fucking kidding me? And the film frames him as he was correct in the end. Yeah, with that, like, fucking, like, telepathic message. It's like, oh, Haruo. If the- humanity continues his path, Ghidorah will return. Yeah, like when fucking uh, Captain Exposition Man shows the, the vulture at the end. And it, like- So, like, what's the fucking message? Because the Billa Saludo uh, are villains because they, they-, they depend on their advanced technology to get shit done. So technology's bad, I guess. So technology's bad. Uh, Metfees shows that religion is blinding and leads you to destruction. But so, Mothra saves the day. But yeah, but Mothra is also depicted as a god, and she fucking helps Haruo get out of the uh, the delusion of Metfees and and rise against him. So like that's a mixed message and really fucking confusing. Um, civilization's bad, but the Hotu are fine, and like all technology's bad. But the thing is, they're using technology. <laughs> like I'm sorry. Arrows and sticks is a type of technology. Yeah, it's primitive, simple technology, but, but it's, that's what it is. And humans grow, they advance. Like, uh, like if you make a bow and arrow, you're give gonna, it a couple hundred years, you eventually will, you'll have a gun. Exactly. 
it, you, you have, you, you ride a horse, eventually you're gonna invent a car. And it's just like, I honestly, I don't know if these films, I feel, I heard these films were rushed. Uh, they're, I, they're, I believe it. With, with how stiff and weird the animation looks at times and how fucking awkward the mouth flaps are. But I we, believe it. And even though we watched the dub, it still felt awkward. I, I watched I watched a bit of the sub to still see if the mouth movements looked any less awkward. They still do. <laughs> Geesh. But the thing is, like, we're, we're talking about characters and themes because they're one and the same with these films. Because we don't have characters. It's character... Fu- we don't have characters. We have plot points. Plot... Like, Yuko was a non-character. She was just... She was literally she, a... Wo- she, she is a plot device to drive Haruo's development. A woman in a refrigerator. Basically, when she when she gets nano metaled, yeah. To uh, to anyone who doesn't know what women in refrigerators, it's a it's a terrible uh, trope used uh, when writing female characters. When a a female character is killed off, and the only purpose is to drive action from a male character, it, it's it's kind of disgusting writing. It, it really is. And the thing about this, it's just, I it's like, frustrating. It really is because the I here's the thing. And I, people defend this shit. Here's the thing. If you like it, it's your opinion. I'm not like, happy. I'm, you're not less of a person for enjoying it. In you fact, can enjoy it all you damn like. We just don't. And the thing is, I'm actually happy you enjoyed because you find something enjoyable in these films that I couldn't find. And the fact that you could, it makes me, I, I actually think that's really good of you. And the thing is, I didn't want to hate these films. I was When it was announced we're getting an anime of Godzilla, this was a dream. I wanted to see Godzilla <clears throat> in anime form. And... I like we've seen kaiju animes like Ava, Gridman, uh, when Dagatine was cool, <laughs> and, and like there's so many cool potentials for a Godzilla anime, especially how good anime is becoming lately. And it's just this is just wasted potential. And the thing that infuriates me so much is just how arrogant. I, I'm gonna, I pulled out this I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull out this article mm. um, from one of the uh, directors, and he was direct, uh, called kind of called out on the backlash of these anime films. Mm-hmm. It's this is a uh, Seshita who was interviewed, and this is um on Sci-Fi when this there we go, um, when he was asked about like the backlash, he said quote unquote we welcome getting bashed by the traditionalists. Uh, at this is on uh, Godzilla.com. Uh, the quote was we welcome getting bashed by the traditionalists. Said Seshita, that proves more than anything we succeeded in creating something different. Uh, and uh, Shizuno uh, said I'm not a Godzilla expert. And I'm simply made a film I thought would be enjoyable. And you know what, uh, Shizuno? If you're happy with it, I'm proud of you. I'm glad you made a film that you enjoy. But Seshita. But, but that, that, I'm glad he didn't say we made something great. No, get the fuck out of here. Like, you're just trying to cover your ass that traditionalists hate it because it's, like, it's, no. Because guess what? You know what was different but was awesome? Shin. Shin was different. Shin was full of political commentary about the broken structure of the Japanese emergency response system. It was a f- character-focused story. A human-focused Godzilla film. Like, Which they'll Jeff- fight. Yeah, they're there's not- no other kaiju. It's just the humans trying to stop Godzilla. But, and it just shows, like, the governmental structure as a response to... It was the tidal wave, uh, right? It was the uh, tsunami. The tsunami of... of 2011. The- as well as the, um, the Fukushima uh, nuclear disaster that came afterwards. Exactly. And in... And that was just like how the first original Gojira in 1954 was meant to comment on nuclear war. Like, Shin Godzilla is to talk about the Japanese government and how it responds to disaster. And with this, like, the whole idea that technology brings war and death and cause monsters. Hey, that would have been original back in 1954. But this is 2019. We need to have the genre advance. Like, if Shin Godzilla was a breath of fresh air, this was an awkward cough. And it just really feels to be anti-science, which me as a, a advocate for advancing better sciences for the betterment of all of mankind really genuinely on a moral level gets me upset because it feels like it's supporting like shit like anti-vaxxers and flat earthers. Well, not to say, not to <laughs> oh. say, not to say that the creators of this film are in support of those things, but I'm saying it's still a very vocal anti technological progress message and shit like that gets me upset and like if you want to make an environmental film sure but you got to have your like define your terms as they say in school yeah and and to like put like another cap on like things like that and the idea of technology and like it's not technology in of itself that's evil like just like the creators of black mirror said 
It's a people po- problem, not a technology problem. Like, technology is a neutral idea, but humans made nukes. Yeah, humans. like, nukes don't just come into existence when technology is advanced enough. So, it, like, people who think like that are people who don't think at all. Or if you're just saying humanity sucks, then why not have the film end with humanity getting extinct, if you hate humanity that much? Yeah. Or, or like, ugh. there is no optimism with these films. It's, it's just... Okay, let's. It, it doesn't even need to be optimistic. Like or, it could be terrible and pessimistic and anti-human, but the fact is, it's not. Or it tries to, but fails. It, it again. It just feels hollow, fake, deep. It brings it in order to make itself appear smarter than it really is. It brings up philosophical questions like how far, how far is going too far with technology? The dangers of a religious mindset. Um. Things like letting your anger consume you and falling into obsession. Things like that, like, those are genuine things that it, that can make entire films in and above themselves. But this film just kind of, like, throws them in. It's like, maybe if we cover all this stuff and we just mention it, people will think we're really cool and we're, we're introspective and we made a super smart film. No, it just, to me, it feels like it, they were... Some people will say they're trying too hard. I say they weren't trying hard enough. And the thing is, if, like, I heard a theory, the reason why these films didn't do well in Japanese box office. One, these films literally came out two months on Netflix worldwide. So I feel like maybe a lot of people didn't want to spend money at the theater because they know it's going to be on Netflix in two months. Mm-hmm. Another thing is, people realize these films were probably made as filler to, for King of the Monsters. Because there was, between the release of Shin and King of the Monsters, there's like a year and a, a year and a half gap of no kaiju films. Aside from... Rampage and Pacific Rim Rise. But in terms of Godzilla, it feels like Toho really wanted him in the public light still. And they decided to just fart these out just to fill in time. And if that's the case, Toho... You watched, uh, like, what? Like, uh, all three of these films together? You'd say, what, it's about, like, four hours or something? To four hours, three and a half. Something like that. So you're basically watching four hours of jingling keys. It is just, hey, look, it's Godzilla! Look, look, it's Godzilla! It's, it's stupid. And, 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 like, we talked about how uh, it's it's talked about that it was originally going to be, a, like, a series. The pacing of this feels like a shitty, cheap A1 Pictures anime. It really does. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, a- uh, it, like I may not be a fan of Digibro, but any, like, I used to, but I, I had a falling out with Digibro. But Digibro had a great bit when he talked about Gungale Online, how he talked about how many fucking scenes are just characters, like, sitting at a cafe, sitting at a bar. Just, just talking. Just talking. Which is, it's, it's not, per, it's just, or just recapping things on what happened earlier. It, it's just talking to save money on animation. Yes, exactly. So, like, we could be having an exciting fight scene right now, or we could be developing the plot right now, but let's catch up the, let's catch up this character who hasn't been involved. Let's just sit down and talk, because having two characters barely moving, just flapping their mouth holes just discussing shit is way cheaper and easier to make than actual interesting stuff going on. Yeah, exactly. The and first two films, like, we talked about the, like, the nanometal, 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 nanometal. That scene, there's several scenes where they just say it over and over, but there's one extraneously long one where they're just walking on a bridge in the middle of Mechagodzilla City, and it feels like it goes on for a fucking hour. And the thing is, if Koho really wanted to make this an anime series... I honestly think it would have been a wor- a better investment. I know animation is expensive. And I know with a film you have better chances of... But with getting- better placement of budgetary restraints and, like, pacing themselves better, I think this could have been a little better. It still probably wouldn't be that amazing if they're still working off the same script. But it could have been b- at least looked at nicer. At least an eight-episode miniseries. Something. So... Yeah, let's rate this in trilogy as a whole, since it's basically one gigantic film. I'm going to give this series as a whole two and a half Mechagodzilla heads out of five. Really? Yeah. Hmm. For me, though, I think I'm going to give it... Mm, I don't know. Because of how mad the third one make, made me, I'm going to give it one nano metal covered waifus out of five. <laughs> so, hopefully you guys enjoy our review and our rambling. It's just, uh, when we find, when we review something good, we'll be more collective. But thank you guys so much for following us, liking our content, and we hope to see you guys on the next episode. This is Chris. And this is Cole. And this is us signing out. Hey, thank you for listening to this new episode of Gargantua Cast. Please subscribe and rate us five stars wherever you're listening to your podcast. We're updated bi-weekly on Mondays. 
If you're on YouTube, please like, subscribe, and comment below. Follow GorgantraCast on Twitter for news and updates, discussions on the latest episodes, or just chat with us, because I like to chat. And we all know Kaiju fans like to talk. Please visit the GorgantraCast Patreon page. GorgantraCast is an independent project, and as such, all equipment and research materials come out of pocket. Any support you give is appreciated and get rewarded along the way, such as merch, voting on the next episode topic, and be part of the monthly raffle for Kaiju goodies. And see you guys on the next episode.